You're watching the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Now, it's time for the Brandon Austin Show. Well, happy Monday as we uh, count down to the NFL Draft. It gets closer and closer, and um, are the Jags going to make another move? A big splash move. I can't get out of my system. I feel like they are, but maybe that's starting to fade a little bit uh, as we get closer and maybe agents are debunking trade requests, rumors. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into the Brandon Ayuk stuff. There's also uh, at least a report out on T. Higgins that I think plays into at least the way we might think about something like this. Uh, and and could that just be now the Jaguars will have to trade up into the top 10 if they want to get one of those big-time receivers? So much going on. I, re- I can't believe we're this intrigued by the number 17th overall pick with the Jags, but I found myself as intrigued as ever. Uh, about this one. This is a fascinating one, given what the Jaguars have done. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. We've got some fantastic weather in Jacksonville in the middle of April. Tax day. Hope you got them done. Kid's birthday today. Happy birthday, Ty and Kaylee. And also, uh, you know, when they start getting this old, the taxes don't matter anymore. No, without a doubt. Yeah, can't really claim them as their dependents. Yeah, that, whatever, that yeah, tax credit was big. Yeah, yeah. I used to love April 15th. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> Back to back claiming them, right? Because you get for both of them. That's right. Yeah, I mean, uh-huh. coming from a guy who is very inexperienced when it comes to doing his taxes, but uh, I, I am too. I just know I got that. Yeah. But I guess that goes out the window at seventeen. Just to let you know, I've learned. Okay. Uh, so Noted. no more uh, tax credit. No. Maybe there's some other things to help you out with. Oh, I I'm doubt sure it. There's something. Okay. Cost of college. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brent Martino, Austin Lane, and uh, say hello to Kim. She's pushing the button. Say, we've got different button pushers here on the show. So we welcome in Kim. Yeah, I mean, I guess we had to go to the farm system, bring some people up, and I think she's ready to roll, man. <laughs> she seemed is. pretty confident today, so I'm really excited to see what she's got to bring to the it's table. It's not that Hamby has been, uh, like, demoted or anything. No, no. But he's got multiple jobs, he has and we priorities. have to share him mm-hmm. on occasion. So... Uh, we are doing such, and he'll be back with us uh, throughout the the weeks. And but there are times that we're going to have uh, some pinch hitters, yeah. and so uh, we are looking forward to that. All right, the big news this morning. We're just going to get right into it. And before I do get into it, you haven't seen it. Well, I mean, to be fair, well, I, I just, I, just okay. I had to take a look. I man. mean, come on, you ruined the surprise. We're going to unveil it for you. Sorry, man. I just couldn't. I couldn't I, wait. Everyone's talking about it in the chat already. I had oh, to see what my. they're talking about. Are you? By the way, are you? Are you I always ask this question, are you a uniform guy? Like, the kid, does it do anything for you? I think you know it does something for me, Brent. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I want to get into the, a little bit of the psychology of that with the chat because I really don't get why it does this to the fan base. Like, I think it's cool, but I'm not being critical of it. I'm just like, why? What's the why behind it? Why do people get so excited about, okay. about a new look uh, uniform? So anyway, Kim, you ready? Thumbs up. Good to go. All right, let's. Uh, here's what the Jaguars released in the last hour on their social media. Oh, I put some work into this, by the way. I can see that. I know I didn't tweet that. Jags making a movie out of everything. Absolutely. Ominous tones. Ominous tones. Old school logo. Bum, bum, bum. There it is. Does it give you the chills? I mean, I do have goosebumps a little bit. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So here's where I stand on the whole uniform thing. I am a sucker for, for throwbacks. You know, I, I love the throwback thing. If I'm being completely honest, and I've spoken on this before, the current Jaguars uniforms, while they're cool because they incorporate the teal, which I'm a big fan of, I thought they were lacking a little bit when they unveiled them. And the biggest lack for me would have been, you know, not incorporating any kind of gold around the lettering and just kind of having a solid number with no, what do they call it, piping or lining would That's be? That's good. Yeah. So I think when we have an opportunity to try to go back a little bit, because the old school ones with the Jaguars on the side by the arm, 10 out of 10. So one would assume that's what they're going to be bringing back, incorporating some more gold. I'm not sure on the helmet, do you go the old logo or the new logo just for the throwback you know, completion? I mean, either way, it's fine with me for the logo per, per se. But the George, the, I mean, if you're incorporating the gold to it, I'm all for it, Brent. So you like the gold being added to it? I think I just like of, the outline numbers a little more. Just a little, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I get what you're saying there, and and do, but uh, 
I think everybody just loves the old Jaguar more than anything else, right? Sure. And that's what's hitting people today. I mean, just the idea of going back and those old uniforms, the Fred Taylors, the Jimmy Smiths, the Mark Burdells, that uniform, that 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 is a very, you know, synonymous with the Jaguars. And and by the way, the glory days of the Jags, it was their best run, right? Their sustained success. So I wonder if that has something to do with it. I mean, obviously, now you get 25, 30 years into an organization and you have your favorite times and you have the best time of the organization. That was the most sustained success. That was an exciting time around here. That was where a lot of your best players have come from that are in the pride of the Jaguars now. I wonder how much of it is that emotional tie for a fan base that has gotten older with this team. And back to their childhood, mm-hmm. is is that a little bit of it as much as the actual throwback uniform? I mean, it, it. it could definitely be nostalgia of better times, yeah, one would say. say. Yeah, yeah um, just because you think about, you know, the dual colored helmet, you think about that. I mean, what, that was 2017, you had that one good year? Uh, yes. Yeah, and then the rest was, you know, people were leaving and you weren't <laughs> winning a lot, so yes. like... Those do, and then also the the whole mustard colored thing too is you know known for this as well. So like people probably have a good connotation with that. And then this this newer one that was unveiled, where it got unveiled first in the airport, if I'm not mistaken, if that's what would happen. Is um, that what happened? Isn't that what? It, yeah, like the, the the latest one. Oh, I'm like saying, they're like the, in right now. The, yeah, the, the, not real, this. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. official jersey. Yeah, got unveiled in the airport and everything. So yes, it kind of yes, took a little lower, like, yes, uh, bit away that. from it. And you know, like, like I said, I mean. I'm not mad at the current jerseys that they have, but once again, I think their numbers, to me, they leave a little bit to be desired. So I think bringing back the gold, bringing back the Jaguar on the arm, it's, it's going to be cool. Yeah, um, I, I like it too. I like all the things that you just said. I mean, I, I'm not I, – I don't mind it. I like the fact that the fans get excited about it. I, I don't, but I guess that could be because I wasn't here. Like, I wonder if that's a little bit of it. Like, it doesn't – I'm just being honest. Like, it doesn't like, oh, my gosh, what a morning. Like, people are like, whoa, yeah. I wasn't here. Like, it doesn't like, – yeah, to but- me, it doesn't – or I just – I say this all the time anyway. Like, I'm not a huge uniform guy. I might be like, hey, that's a cool uniform. I like the uniform, but I'm not, like, getting uber excited about anybody that has uniforms. And I just think our society does, our world does, which is fine. That's why we uh, – can create logos and and yeah. people like Nike and people like different brands like that's just the way it goes. So like there was no excitement when they unveiled their new logo like back in the day. Or there's no excitement like when they had their new jerseys unveiled a couple years ago. I mean the only time I got really probably excited about it is because we got a behind the scenes look like more than a decade ago at the new uniforms like when they did that. We went out to Oregon and so yeah, I got yeah. to be a, like a behind the scenes peek at that. So that was kind of fun. But yeah, I just. Again, some things resonate different for all of us. It, the uniform stuff doesn't do it for me. But I've never also been this awesome. I'm, never, I'm not like a buying jersey guy. Sure. And I'm not saying you have to be to like the uniform stuff. But I think a lot of people like to buy jerseys, collect jerseys, those kind of things. I'm not that guy either. Mm. So I, I think this ties it all together. Um, it's uh, it's it's good that the fan base gets excited. Sell some tickets here 10 days before the draft. There you go. Uh, but I am – the um, I think the Jags uniforms, by the way, are fine now. I, I get what you're saying about the outline of it. Uh, but I think this wrinkle is nice. And the Jags had to wait on this. I mean, this has been a couple years in the works. Like this, They've been eyeing this thing um, to, to have it. And I think there's kind of rumor we're starting to spread, right, the anticipation of it. Uh, the league has rules. They just added another rule, I think, where you can actually, going into 25, do another alternate helmet. I think okay. it was. Okay. I think I, I saw that, if I'm not mistaken. So... Uh, what are what's everybody saying? Yeah, let NFL allow in three helmets. Could they use the Jag mullet helmet? <laughs> yeah. uh, the best helmet, 2017. I I don't know if Matt's being truthful here. Uh, may or may not have purchased a throwback Baselli on eBay this morning, says Z Fortner. Nice. Uh, maybe with your winnings from the bracket, I got to get you that uh, Z Fortner. We'll do the. Uh, we got to pay off that bracket. Did he win? He won something. Well, he won something. Yeah, yeah. I think he'd be one of us. Like okay. Me. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Uh, the uniforms we have now are not fine, Brent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when do we get to see them and buy one? That I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure when uh, all that comes out. Usually, I think in the past, I, I think it's been all over the place. I think it's been around the draft. I think it's been like around the schedule. Uh, remember, Jags used to do State of the Franchise. So there was that part mm-hmm. um, that, that they would reveal some stuff. But I also think that there could be like deeper into the summer it's been in the past. But I would say pretty soon. I mean, 
they're going to – it's a good time to do it, right? Uh, you know, they just said 30th anniversary patch on I don't know if they have the 30th anniversary patch, but, you know, to be able to do a throwback on your 30th year is, is kind of a cool deal. The, J- the Jags are no longer that young, too, as an organization. You can have all these reincarnations of uniforms and players and yeah. different generations of people that, that, that associate with um, different – Errors of this team, like we are to that point that that they are not, they're no longer a, an organization in its infancy. No, for sure. Yeah, they're they're in their adolescence. Would you say? Or yeah, I would say so. Yeah, they're not full grown up. Do you think it's a little gamesmanship from um, Jacksonville to release it right after the Jets just dropped their uniforms, their new ones? I don't think that's the case. Like okay. I, I think uh, just kind of fell on in line. I think they all do it at certain times. <laughs> I've told you. Have I told you the uniform story? I've told you the uniform story. If you have, I can't remember it. All right, so we go to. <laughs> I don't know how much I'm supposed to reveal of this story, but I'll, I'll reveal. Oh what yeah, I think yeah, I, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you haven't heard the uniform story, here we my go. Claim to fame or not? I was just telling you about like it was, I think it was 11 years ago. Something came up on Facebook recently, like a memory, and I was I think it was 11 years ago when we went out to Oregon and. Uh, we were spent like 36 hours out in Oregon, and I think we went because we were the official station of the Jags as part of it, mm-hmm. and we went with the Jags team as well of people, and we went in April but because I went from the Masters right to it, like came back, boom, jumped on a plane, went, and uh, so we went to Nike headquarters out there, which was really cool to see some of the stuff. They couldn't show us everything, but they show some. They do a whole presentation. Justin Blackman was the guy modeling the uniform, nice. so that will give you some time and space on it. Um, so they do this whole thing and basically they're showing you in April, but they said you couldn't reveal until again, this one I think came in like June or July. It might've been right before training camp. Would that make sense? I don't know, but it was a bit. Yeah. All right. So we got it in April and it was a bit, you had to hold on. So you, you basically embargoed it. And, and what that means is, Hey, you can gather all the stuff. You'd be ready to go, but you can't release anything until it's time to go. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a special sneak peek behind the scenes, but you can't break the news on it. And and that was the agreement. Um, so we do that. We get all these pictures. We get video. We do some stories behind the scenes. It was really cool. It was a, it was a great experience. Well, during that stretch, like we had taken a bunch of pictures. And I forgot after where they did this presentation. It was like an hour. Okay. And right after that presentation, we go to another room. Well, I forgot a battery or tripod. I think it was a battery in um, in the room we were just in. They're like, okay, I go back and get the battery. And I was like, oh, I didn't see this when I walked in. It's all these mannequins of all the teams, all 32 teams with the Jags in there too. And I'm like, all right, I'll get another picture of that. I had my phone on me. <laughs> so anyway. Well, of course I had your phone on you. Of course. So we do the photo dump whenever it's released. And all of a sudden I'm going live at the stadium at 5 o'clock. On the stadium release date, I mean, on the uniform release date, everybody's excited talking about it. And I'm in the parking lot, and I get this call from the Jags. It's like, hey, um, did you, like, release the Miami Dolphins jersey or take <sighs> pictures? Or I'm like, what are you talking about? I have no idea what you're even talking Like, I, I really, I was clueless yeah. what they were talking about. And this is how innocent this was. Like, I really had no idea. Well, apparently... The Miami Dolphins, us, and I think... Uh, the Vikings, wasn't it? I think it was the Vikings. Held it, yes. Yeah, good work for you. I still got it. I think they, the three teams, which I didn't realize at the time that these other teams were doing it. I don't know yeah. if I missed that part or just didn't know, but to your point, they all unveil at different times. Well, I guess the Dolphins hadn't <laughs> unveiled yet. And all of a sudden, their message boards and chats are seeing this image from you up on our stuff yes. on Action News Jacks. Because it's that mannequin shot, and it has the Dolphins and the Vikings in it, too. But the Vikings had already released. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> I basically so, like, spoiled. Well, yeah, so here's the thing. Did you get in trouble for that? Because like, it's not like it's your team that you spoiled. You spoiled the Dolphins. I Who cares? Never, I they're, never. What? They're seven hours south. <laughs> Who cares? I never I never got in trouble for it. Yeah, good. Uh, but, I mean, Tell I think I also it. got protected on it. And I also think... I'm never allowed in Nike headquarters. Again. <laughs> Phil Knight said, "Absolutely not. <laughs> no Get him out of here." I think that might have been the last time. They, I don't know 
I'm I'm hesitated to ask. Oh, you had to run up everybody. Of that. Yeah. So we haven't seen anybody from like news stations go back to like headquarters since you did that. Uh, Nicely done. I don't know. Like maybe they yeah. have. I know this. We haven't been invited back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, man, I always. You know, it's funny. I always say this about like, and you know this because you got in trouble all the time when you were a kid. So. Oh yeah. You've yeah. documented it. Yeah. But you know, there's sometimes like you're really trying to skirt the rules. All the time, yeah. Story you know, of my like, life. Yeah, yeah. You're trying to skirt the rules, and you're hoping like you don't get caught. Yeah. And this is one of those times like there was no intent. Yeah, like, there was no know, intent. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know what had happened. It. Yeah. Like I honestly, I was like, "What are you calling me? What are you talking about?" Yeah, yeah. I was like, "Well, yeah, whatever pictures are up there, I took the. I mean, we put the pictures up there, <laughs> <laughs> and I had to backtrack that story." Um, just Did you to have to issue out. an apology or anything. No, I don't think so. I, I really think the hero of that moment was probably Dan Edwards from the Jags. Okay. I think he saved me there. Solid dude, by the way. Yes. Yes. I think I always am in debt for that. Like, I mean, what are you going to do? Like, what's my punishment going to be, though? Yeah, I mean, it's from Miami. Like, what are they going to do? It's not like I it's can't not come like to the Miami the, press it's box. It's not like if the it's night before the Jags revealed, I started to push photos out. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? That, that would be like malicious in intent and all that stuff, but. <laughs> I got an invite to the Lions release party if you want to go to that. You already have one? What, they got one coming up? Yeah, I think it's this week. Really? The Lions So you got an release. invite? Yeah. Well, what are they doing? Uh, it's, I don't know. It's like at like their Ford Field. It's like a special gala event, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Mixer. I don't know. The ja- you, know what's inter- you know what I don't know is what uniform the Jags have sold like the most of? Like you wonder? Like what, what combination they do and yeah. how much this will sell. This will be an interesting one to keep Oh, this one's on. going to sell. You would think, right? This is going to be hot in the streets, Brent. Yes, absolutely. Do you want yeah. one? Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely take you, a look. Can you customize an off Austin Lane one even though it doesn't fit? <laughs> Even though I don't. <laughs> Why not? I mean, nah, I'm good. That would actually, by the way, that would be a nice touch by the Jags organization. Yeah. Is to send one to all their former players. With Brent, their- now you got something. Not gonna happen. I'll suggest it to the team. Hey, not gonna happen. But no, seriously. Like you talk Brent, about what the Lions do. I right? gotta pay seventy five bucks for my old jersey. Still, like in the in the pro shop that they still have the authentic ones. Really? Yeah. We have getting... an Austin Lane jersey still up there. Ah, uh, there was a couple years ago because really? somebody bought it and said, "Hey, do you want this?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Where'd you get?" It? He's like, "I bought it from like the used fan thing. It was like seventy five bucks." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, really? Yeah." I don't know. I, mean, I, I got plenty of them. I'm good. I'm all set. Uh, um, well, I I, think, <laughs> I didn't mean to burst your bubble. I think I think I might tell the Jags about that. It's a good idea, though, right? Yeah, it would mean something to a former player to get. It would definitely mean something, but I don't think they're going to do it, Brent. Why not? I don't think they do that. Like what? That's a lot of jerseys. For, are we getting every? How many former... times have played for the Jags? Like just in and out? Yeah, a lot. Hundred well, th- like thousand. Do like a year of service. Though. Thousands. How about draft picks? Oh, well, see, now, now you're starting to limit it a little bit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you but then what about, the, what about the undrafted guys that dominated? Yeah, I don't know what see? the story is. But you can have a <laughs> But you obviously, like, listen, maybe Someone's should... going to have a lot of work on their hey, hands. Hey, Brent. it's a billion-dollar business, all right? Sure. Like, they're probably not going to do it, but you say it all the time, the things that the Lions do. Sure. Yeah, but the Lions are going to be a, an Austin Lane retro jersey. Well, they're not, but they're inviting you to uniform reveals still. They are, yeah. All right, so I'm the set, Jag- man. Like, yeah, don't don't put it. Don't. It's put not all about work. you. It's about all the rest. Like, okay, I everybody think that else. Could but be like, a cool gesture. Yeah, that's a great gesture. But you're putting a lot of work on someone's plate that I'm not trying to be a part. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to make someone's job a lot they harder. They do have a them. seamstress down there. That would be a lot of a big summer. It's <sighs> gonna be some arthritis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> better better get out the theragesic or whatever because your hands be gonna be hurt. Easier way to do it. You can patch that sucker Shut, up. Just get get fanatics on the on the horn. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> just yeah, we all get a replica. It's not authentic. Just <laughs> yeah. like a replica. Cheap <laughs> and then material. that would get criticized. Oh yeah, there's yeah. no win here. Ooh, well, we can't. Yeah, there's no win, Brent. Just just hey, let it go, man. It's all good. Does this add, by the way, to the Jaguars' good off season? There's some excitement for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the Jags have helped. Cre- I mean, listen, Jags are coming off a collapse. That's actually an interest. Have the Jags done a good job of answering the bell off the collapse mm. this year? And I'm not saying everything's reaction. This stuff was going to happen whether they went to the Super Bowl or not, I think. Now, maybe all the offseason stuff wasn't going to happen in terms of how much they spent and everything else. But overall, have the Jags responded nicely to the collapse as an organization? 
where you got the fan base kind of Debbie Downer. Now, they got off to a terrible start, in my opinion, because you don't have Doug Peterson and Trent Bulky going out there and saying this will never happen again. The messaging was offline, uh, in my estimation. It took three weeks for Bulky to come out and answer the bell. Uh, but And then wasn't talking to Josh Allen, so like, there yeah, was like that. Yeah, that, that first three weeks, bad. But ever since, like, I don't know, January 24th or 18th or whenever the heck that day was, it would have been wor- later than that, but f- yeah. let's just say February 1st, mm-hmm. the Jacks have corrected pretty nice, I think. They're on the right path. Let's see how this draft shakes out first before we give them their flowers, you know? Well, th- that's the last step of it. Yeah. I would say so, unless, um, unless you bring in, unless you trade for a receiver, which, like we talked about a little bit, like you teased a little bit, may not be on the table anymore. We'll see, but um, I think yeah, the, the the draft can be the nice bow on the present, which was for Jaguars fans this off season, where I think they did make a lot of progress. So here's some of the responses, by the way, and I think we're getting more in the chat, but uh, the the hype is real. Uh, mission accomplished. Ready to run through a wall, says Gage. Mm-hmm. Um, Coach Ripley says it worked because I said uh, Jags got uh, everybody excited on a Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, we got some fireworks. They did so. It worked. Still the best with a Freddie T. Fred does look good in that old uh, throwback there. So Jags, uh, Jags got some got some excitement going here on a Monday morning. Now, what uh, will they do to get better on the field next Thursday when the draft hits? And uh, will they make a move before then? Let's take a time out here on the show. And when we come back on the Brenton Austin show, we kick off a Monday with a little deeper dive on what's going on in the receiver position. What happened with Brandon Ayuk this weekend? Anything or just people bored? <laughs> <laughs> what about T. Higgins? And how does that reshape how the Jaguars might attack this receiver position? And I think we're hyping the receiver position up so much. That if there isn't something done, it's going to feel like a major disappointment. And is that fair or unfair? Is that shame on us or shame on them? Talk more about that receiver spot as the countdown of the draft continues. Shock your mock later today. We think you're going to like it. Oh, guaranteed. We got a new song? Yes. Busted my ass on that, by the way. (laughs) Glad you put a lot of work in. I did. And uh, a lot more to get to here on a Monday on the Brenton Austin Show on the Action Sports Jacks 24 7 Network. You can find it on actionnewsjacks.com and the Action News Jacks app. Everyone loves a good game night. Here you don't have to be the host. You don't have to clean up. They bring the food and drinks to you. And you can watch whatever you want on the big screens. It's more than a card room. It's a night full of fun with friends. Best Bet Jacksonville, Orange Park. And now the newest location here in St. Augustine, right off 95 at exit 311. A brand new clean room. A full bar and menu. My favorite sushi in town. And I love the fries too. You don't have to just play poker at Best Bet. That's why I come over here to the table games and play one card poker. That's a pretty good card and a win. One card poker is like war as a kid. You against the dealer. And this isn't the only fun table game to play. A friendly staff, a lot of fun. It's a good night out at Best Bet Jacksonville Orange Park in the newest location in St. Augustine. You can be a serious player or a novice. It doesn't matter. If winning equals fun, you're a winner every time at Best Bet. I'll save you a seat, and I'll see you down here at Best Bet St. Augustine. Do you have ugly concrete around your home or business? Are you tired of concrete that is cracked? stained or just plain ugly spartan coatings range of products provides a surface that is non-porous easy to clean antibacterial and slip resistant all with superior durability living in florida nearly my whole life i know the toll our weather can take on a garage floor that's why i had matt and the crew from spartan coatings transform this space and the best part they did it in one day It was a professional process from step one. The polyurea and polyaspartic system provide superior flexibility, is four times stronger than epoxy coatings, and will withstand temperatures high and low. Plus, it comes with a 20-year warranty. Whether it's a garage floor, patio, pool deck, driveway, or your interior flooring, Spartan Coatings has you covered. To get started transforming your ugly concrete surfaces, call 904-671-3930 or visit Spartan Coatings dot com today for your free quote i like to say everybody has a story and sometimes we're a part of other people's stories that's the case here at nimic buick gmc 
my family, and the Nimdick family. We've purchased six different vehicles from Nimdick Buick GMC. Maybe you're in the market for a truck. Well, let me tell you about the GMC Sierra. I absolutely love mine. I've had a couple of these. This one's a 2020, but right now on 2024 GMC Sierras here at Nimdick Buick GMC, there's special financing. A year ago, we purchased a GMC Terrain for the kids. Financing rates as low as 0.9% for eligible buyers on terrains and no payments for 90 days. Looking for used instead of new? Buy a used car with the Car Bravo program. Nimnik Buick GMC certifies all makes and models. Let the number one Buick GMC dealer in Jacksonville take care of you and your family. Come on out and see the showroom. Meet the fantastic people. Or shop online at NimnikBuickGMC.com. Nimnik, your friends in the car business since 1941. GMC, we are professional grade. Thank you for making Action News Jacks the best in Jacks and Folio's Best of Jacks 2023. Best TV station, best TV newscast, best TV morning show. Chandler Morgan voted best TV anchor. The Chief Mike Burrish voted best meteorologist. And Brent Martineau voted best TV sports anchor. And while you're on the go, best news website and best local blog, The Burrish Blog. Thank you for making Action News Jacks local coverage you can count on. It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who's coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 network. Edward Waters University with their spring game. Spring games all over the place, from Gainesville to Athens and right here in Jacksonville. That's a score, uh, by the way. It's spring games... It's funny, we were talking about this in the sports office yesterday. That's an interception. Uh, the spring games feel like they are less important to everybody on the outside. I'm not saying they're not important on the inside. It's a good way to kind of celebrate the spring and the practice and the work put in and, and get to see it almost like in somewhat glorified practice or game action, if you will, however you want to classify it. But, I mean, we used to go cover these things left and right. felt like you were diagnosing them, analyzing them. Mm. I don't know if it's just because of the way the world is now that everybody can consume it and they don't have to necessarily be there. I think there was a time where you were trying to get 100,000 people at these games and then they were like, okay, not everywhere that's happening. Uh, so why are we doing this? I think also people got hip to the game. Like these are not games. They are practice. It's going to a practice. But at Kentucky, they just went to – uh, an introductory news conference for their basketball coach and had 24,000 people in the arena. So some places you yeah. can get the craziness, right? No, without a doubt. And, and other places you just can't. But I I never – I have always said this since I got to Jacksonville. Again, I'm not, I didn't grow up around here or grow up in the South in college football world. And I think times change and the landscape changes, but I also am very cognizant of, hey, maybe it's just you, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like you don't appreciate it the way. But even when I was covering them and going to Gainesville for these – you know, weekends uh, for the, the orange and blue game. I was like, what are we learning about the fall? Like, I, I just never thought anything that you saw in April translated to what you might see in the fall. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about spring games, it's definitely more for the, the players and the teams more than just for the outside perception of it all yeah, from the public. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think spring 
ball and spring practice or anything like that. And much like morning conditionings, winter conditionings as well, it just it's good for team camaraderie, yeah. right? It's good uh, for team unity. I think when you get to the professional level and you talk about OTAs and things like that, then you know it can kind of feel like it's mundane. If you're implementing a new system, it's huge. Like Ryan Nielsen's going to take full advantage of of this spring because while well, there's a new defense to learn, yeah, maybe Doug Peterson takes over play calling, so there'll be a little transition there as well. But at the college level, where you know new guys are coming in every single year, there's always a turnover, and you're still kind of shaping you know minds, if you will. I think it's extremely important. Yeah, that's a, that's a good call. Again, I think there's there are a lot of things we do, like in our business. There's probably a lot of things that you do in your business in your world that you would say internally, like they have a lot of meaning. Um, quite frankly, what we've done with this new project, there's been a lot of internal meeting more than external meeting at the current moment, just a couple months in probably. But I think that's where this one falls. And, and now I'm not telling you fans don't get excited. Fans want to see DJ Lagway. I mean, he comes in as a very coveted prospect and a guy that can really change their program. I mean, you need the quarterback to be able to be successful. So I think Lagway carried intrigue. But outside of that, like for me, like that's all I really cared about. Now, the diehards will want to see the receiver in the corner and everything else. But if you're making judgments on a spring game, you're out of your mind, um, which – Fans sometimes are out of their mind, which is okay. Like that's why we have fandom. That's why sports are fun. That's why we probably have shows like this. So, but I think we're a little bit more like, hey, this is what it is. And and I don't know. I just don't feel like I didn't. I feel like you almost had to remind yourself the orange and blue game was this weekend. Um, sure. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It just is what it is. It's just times change, and and we're not fooled by it. And we're about to get even more football games. So if you couldn't get enough of college, like you're getting more. And I wonder if this is a little bit of an NFL impact too. Like the NFL is always in the psyche, always in the psyche, which takes away from even if you're trying to do maybe a spring game. We're, we're worried about the draft right now around here more than the Gators spring game. Well, and even like compared to an NFL preseason game, like I'm not sure what those numbers look like either. Like we'll, we'll watch a preseason game, but like are they doing killer numbers? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> so sorry, I got stuck. Throwback uh, uniform announcement gave me a heart palpitation. There we go. <laughs> Every home game, baby. <laughs> and by the way, Jaguars need to draft the 6'8 FSU wide receiver, Johnny Wilson. I don't know. Uh, well, first of all, I think he measured like 6'6. Six, six. Okay. I don't even think he measured 6'7. He's not 6'8. And there's some, there's not a lot of steam on Maybe actually with Johnny Wilson. On. There's more more steam on the Braden Fisk kid out of Florida State than anybody else, and obviously Benson at running back. Um, But we'll talk about some of those Knowles guys as we get a little bit closer. Uh, So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. The one thing about Florida now, if the Lagway kid kid looks the part, like he looks like he's built like Cam Newton, and and, I mean, they're not alike, but he's just a big dude. He's not just a thrower of the football. He's going to be able to run the ball. He's going to be able to do a lot of things, and Billy Napier's off. Like, they got their guy. Like, they got a guy that can be the dude, it looks like. Mm-hmm. But the crazy thing is, I'm not sure he's even going to play this year at the start because they stopped Mertz. Mertz is back, and he had a nice year. He did have a surprising nice year after what we saw at Wisconsin, where I had zero expectations for him, much like um, who was the guy from Wisconsin that played at FSU? Putting you on the spot now. I can't remember the Oh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, I can't remember. I, okay, but nevertheless, but yeah, and – the thing with Mertz was highly touted out of high school, has a little taste of of greatness at Wisconsin. A lot of people thought that it went to his head, right? Didn't have the mental capacity to be a quarterback. Goes to Florida, and you know what? I think surprised a lot of people, especially up north, in terms of the success that he had. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I think the, the, the latest out of the spring game is, yeah, I mean, Graham Mertz is the guy until he proves that he's not the guy, but he has all the momentum right now going forward. Yeah, he. I am imp- I was impressed with him last year. I don't know how you couldn't be. I think he was coming maybe be a stopgap, you kind of hope, and yeah. then you give way to DJ Lagway. Well, now it's like he might be the guy. The question is, can he be the guy? Can you? Can Does DJ Lagway have to play and probably play in packages, and does he have to play more than that to keep him there? Because yeah. of the way the, the college football world is right now, or the college sports world. By the way, that quarterback was Alex Hornerbrook from uh, um, Hornerbrook. Yeah, Wisconsin, yeah, yeah. went to the FSU. Um, all right, let's spin it back to the NFL. Uh, and what do you make of the IU stuff? Uh, this, uh, By the way, Devontae Smith just got a three-year extension for the Eagles. He's already up for an extension. Wow. Three-year, $75 million contract extension includes $51 million guaranteed. So basically, he's getting like $25 million a year. He's getting Calvin, Calvin Ridley got Devontae Smith numbers. Yeah, I mean, 
To be fair, though, Ridley's going to be their one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, I mean, and Smith doesn't. Philly's, Philly's got a lot of money tied to wide receiver right now. They really do. Which shows you the way. I mean, I know that seems outlandish, but I think that's just the way the league is going. They're, they're not a bad team. I mean, <laughs> you've got to keep getting weapons. Yeah. But so the big story this week, well, big story, but uh, the news started to go yesterday that Ayuk has requested a trade. And then his agent says, check your sources. Yeah. Like basically debunks it. Mm-hmm. When stuff like that, what do you think? I mean, wh- we've been through this before. I mean, is that a, is that a sign that there's smoke? Or is I that mean, just a bad report? You always feel like there's smoke when there's ever a report, right? There's at least conversation. Now, like, how serious is the conversation? Are they just taking calls? Like, I think every team's going to take calls, you know, and then it comes down to, well, if Sam Rand's ready, willing to let him go, what is it going to cost you? And if they're saying a first round pick and some change, maybe they consider it. So the agent coming out and saying, check your sources, okay, that's fine. But also I think agents sometimes have an ego where it's like, if they're not revealing the source and somebody else says it, they want to set the narrative correctly. Yeah, I have got to the point where I think so much of this stuff can be manufactured. Like, I'm not, um, I don't know if it's conspiracy theory, but it's definite, like, you can map this stuff out. Like, you you can play this out. You know how it's going to play out now. We have enough evidence. So let me just give you an example. And, and I'm not saying this happened. I, I would, I'm more of can be naive, Brent, and, and I'm going to take you for your word and be like, yeah, the report was probably a bad report. And why would the agent jump in on this if it and, and say it's not true if it's mm-hmm. not true? But could you see a scene or a situation that the agent or somebody from that camp kind of leaked that out and then just see how the world responds to it for a couple of hours mm-hmm. <laughs> and then be like, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like I just feel like that can happen. Like, where's the? Did the guy totally make it up? Probably not. To your point, right? Somebody's talking. There are people. Well, people have been talking for the last four months that Ayuk isn't going to be playing for the San Francisco 49ers in 2020. I mean, a- Antonio Brown back in March said he's going to the Steelers. So I mean, but it's been like a. And the the crazy thing is on the Ayuk front, so much conversation by us as well that you almost feel like he's available. Yeah. Like they've been shopping him and they haven't. So, like, it's hard. I, have we manufactured this Ayuk stuff from the outside? And by, we're not alone. The Jags, the Steelers fan base, the Patriots fan base, now the Bills fan base has lost every receiver they've got. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. You, you're looking at these kind of situations saying, hey, what do you think? I mean, he's this is a contract year for him on his rookie deal. Each 26 season, as base salary is 14 million, so there it is on the cap. I mean, it's it's everything. Uh, and he wants a new deal. Why wouldn't you want a new deal, right? He's he's performed nicely, and right now they're not giving it to him or getting it, and that's where all this st- starts from. So if you're wondering where the Ayuk stuff came from, if he's under contract, well, that's why. I mean, this is typical of a player. Are they going to be able to afford him? I mean, they they might have to play Purdy. They're gonna have to, they've paid uh, McCaffrey. They've paid Debo. Like, how many guys are they going to be able to keep? Yeah. And so that's where this comes from. But bottom line is, he is under contract with San Francisco. They've got the power here uh, to utilize him for another season and then see what happens after that. They could always go to the trade deadline too and then maybe make a move if they don't feel like things are working out with them just to get something in return. No, without a doubt. Um, Listen, I do think there's some rumors to it going on right now. And when we talk about that, like where there's smoke, there's always going to be a little fire. So I'm not saying sitting here right now saying, okay, San Francisco, they don't want to let him go. But if the right opportunity comes around, why wouldn't like, – they'll entertain it. Because, I mean, are you going to justify paying Brock Purdy? Because you got to pay Brock Purdy eventually. Like, And we talked about that a couple weeks ago. Either you pay him now and probably get a hometown discount, or he goes out there again, does his thing, is in MVP conversations, maybe leads you to a long playoff run, possibly another Super Bowl run, and all of a sudden you're talking about a top five paid quarterback in the NFL, if not probably top three, if not the highest paid quarterback possibly in the NFL. Not saying he has a skill set to match that, but that's what it's going to cost you. So 
I think the 49ers, for the right price, will let Ayuk go. Yeah, I do too. I mean, I think from a business standpoint, if they haven't done anything yet, if there's there's some splintering, it seems like that it could be going on. Didn't he scrap them from their in- the Instagram? Wasn't that a, a deal? Yeah, yeah. Like when that starts to happen, uh-oh. Um, by the way, that does happen, and guys go back to their teams. Kyle Murray, Lamar Jackson, I think, are two examples of it. But it happens all the time. It right? does happen all the time. Uh, so anyway, keep an eye on it. I, I will say the, the agent coming out and debunking it, I, I lose a little bit of faith that something's going to happen. I've been this big guy that's like, hey, something's going to happen with Ayuk more than Higgins. I, I, I felt like the Bengals are going to run it back one more time. We'll get to Higgins in a second, too. Sure. But but I just feel but, like they're going to run it back and, and try to win a Super Bowl with Higgins and, and Jamar Chase and probably not let him go. But Ayuk now, I'm starting to well, okay, if the agent does that, then maybe this isn't a real deal possibility. Is it? Am I wrong here, though? Or does the agent not really matter in the situation? Well, he shouldn't, might not. Yeah, shouldn't might not. John Lynch be saying this? Because, like, the agent doesn't have control if his player gets traded or not. Well, but it, the, the the story was requested a trade, so that's got to come from there. Oh, side. okay, okay. got gotcha. you. Okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. So if, if that that's what he's really debunking. He's not saying that they're not going to get traded. Yeah. He's just saying we didn't request a trade. Gotcha, okay. Um, okay, so now to the Higgins part of this. Because, again, now, listen, we've been talking about this for a long time, and I know you guys know this uh, listening and watching here on the Action Sports Shacks 24-7 Network. Brent and Austin show on a Monday – Receiver is paramount, it feels like. Receiver is like, Jags got to get something done. Well, it's Ayuk. It's Higgins. It's one of these top three guys. Whatever order you want to put that in, those are the scenarios, right? There's three buckets that will please people. The fourth bucket is go get somebody at 17 that's a Brian Thomas that might be around. Or there's a fifth bucket, wait till the second round and see who drops and is available because, as we talked about Friday, Mel Kuyper says 14, 15 receivers are going to go in the first two rounds, so there's plenty to pick from. Yeah. Those are your five options, at least. And, and the crazy thing is Higgins and Ayuk aren't really an option because they're not necessarily there. to. You can't control that option. And same with the other three guys. You can't, you've can't. you got to find a dance partner when it comes to those first three buckets, is my point. No, I mean, they're, they're, they're always an option, though. It just depends what you give up to get those What guys. you want to give up. Yeah. And so if the Jaguars are willing to risk it and get their guy, whether it's Ayuk, whether it's Higgins, all right then. I think that if you're going to risk it in the draft, the top three guys aren't going to fall to you. We know that. Brian Thomas Jr. may not fall to you. So if that's the case – then I'm saying trade up to get your guy. Yeah, so here's the other one. T. Higgins, not feeling good about getting him. Correct. Over the weekend, he was um, at a youth football camp, his football camp. Uh, He's going into his fifth year, obviously, and uh, he's been franchise tagged. And most everybody else, by the way, signed a long-term deal that's been franchise tag, and Winfield is the other one that hasn't, Higgins and Winfield. Winfield's going to, it looks like, but Higgins isn't. Higgins is going to play on that tag. He might be the only guy in the NFL this year that plays on the franchise tag. And um, he had requested a trade earlier in the offseason, uh, and then he, according to WXIX TV, says, I do anticipate it. I've grown a love for Cincinnati that I didn't think I would. I'm looking forward to it when asked about playing for the Bengals in 2024. So does that mean that he's taking the request off the table or has he just been told it ain't yeah. happening, man? We're going all in. We're trying to win a Super Bowl and this is the way we got to do it. And hopefully you're along for the ride. No, I mean, I'm sure it's, he's probably been told things, right? I'm sure his agent has probably given information. And once again, I think in Cincinnati's case, they're probably asking for a king's ransom because they, I mean, Cincinnati, once again, with this tag, holds all the power. And they can theoretically, yeah, they can play him another year. And either he has two options. You don't take that and you sit and you sit the whole season and you're going to pay or you make pretty decent money for the year. Hopefully you stay healthy. Like those are the only two options from T. Higgins. And I think from his perspective, He's going to play. He's going to you know, prove it, essentially a prove-it deal. Cincinnati's not going to re-sign him, and he'll go someplace else then. Yeah, oh, it, I mean, yeah, that's what's going to happen, I think. Um, uh, it would be surprising to see they sign. But, again, they can sign. Every, everybody's signing everybody. You can figure it out. Did you see? I mean, the Jacks have the third most cap space. The third most cap space in the league. They spent the second most amount of money this offseason in free agent and extension contracts. Yeah. Why can't Cincinnati get this done if they want to? Do you know what would make me really – actually, this wouldn't even make sense. 
I was say, do you know what like would make me really sick? Is if T. Higgins played this final year, balled out, Houston chooses to pay him, they have Stefan Diggs at, as a franchise tag, and then they trade Stefan Diggs away for probably a first round or maybe a second round pick, and they just get an embarrassment of riches because of it. Yeah, I mean I mean there's there's I'd be those sick. options. Yeah. Yeah, but here's the deal. If the Jags go up and get one of these three receivers, if they really want to do that, or if they got Nayuk, you wouldn't feel as bad about it because then Jags No, the their Jags guys, get their right? guy. Yeah and, yeah, and that's where so, – so that's really where I get to – that's the latest update on the Higgins and Nayuk stuff. There's some news over the weekend on it. Now, again, I don't really know if there, were new, there was news on Nayuk or if it was just quiet time, let's throw something out there. You never really know. But the bottom line is those are two guys that have been on our radar, and I feel less and less likely – here on a Monday than I did Friday, that the Jags, one of their splash moves to make is going to be that. Um, but we'll see. So here's what, okay, help me understand this though, Brent. And I get right now, okay, whatever. Agents saying they're not going anywhere, they're staying put, fine, okay. Theoretically, what do you see the Jaguars having to trade up to get their guy? And when I say their guy, I mean a top three wide receiver in this draft class. Like, is that going to cost you more to trade up, or is it going to cost you more to trade with, like, the 49ers or the Bengals? Well, I think it's going to cost you more draft capital to trade up. Okay. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, because I've seen some different scenarios out there. But I actually think, like, the Stefan Diggs trade probably laid, made this less appetizing for teams like the Bengals and Niners because – I know there's a lot of money attached and there's other things, but it wasn't like they got two first-round picks for Stephon Diggs, right, or something like that. I mean, it was basically a second-round pick, yeah. which which to me lowers even for the IUK because what people know, like you're basically taking them off their hands because they don't want to pay or can't pay or don't want to make that investment. So you're helping them out at the same time, so you have a little leverage. I don't think you have any of that kind of leverage when you're trading up in the draft. Now, you're going from 17 to 9, 17 to 8. I've seen some scenarios where you don't have to give up craziness, um, but I do think you're going to give up more draft capital wise. I don't, I'm okay with that. Like I'm okay with giving up more draft capital because at the end of the day, you're actually getting a young player on a rookie deal that isn't as expensive. I mean, you, you can get a guy and draft him at number eight. Let's yeah. just say in a, a Dunze, you trade with the Falcons and you get a Dunze at number eight. You're basically getting a deal that would cost one and a quarter seasons for any of these big guys. It's like 35, 37 million, 34 million, whatever it is, the total number of the deal for four years, plus control with the 50 year option and, and more control if you want after that with franchise tags and such. Where if you go get an IUK, you got to give him 25, 26 million a year. Mm-hmm. And so that's like 20 games worth. Out of the young player, you can go get, do the math, four years and then some. So like 85 games in the regular season out of what you could get for an IUK now 20 games now what do you know well you know why you could better Correct. right so you, you've got a proven thing but and you're you probably got, gonna get him at his prime right now as opposed to a guy who's gonna gradually who's get better. try to gradually get better Th- that's a fair point and it's a little unknown i don't care how many people say that these three guys are slam dunks it's still an unknown like you don't know if you're getting the best guy you don't know if your 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 grading is absolute and correct you have no idea in fact all you gotta do is look at the jags history and bulky's history and jags history we did this last night on tv on action sports shacks primetime it's a mess at wide receiver i mean it is a mess from rj soward to matt jones to reggie williams and reggie came first before matt jones i think and then to justin blackman and were there signs were there reasons to do it where i mean yeah like there was a lot of that but it didn't work out they were bad from a character standpoint they didn't perform well enough sometimes because they couldn't stay on the field and the Jags have missed. And then you look at Balky in San Francisco, the one time he went first round, it was A.J. Jenkins, totally whiffed on it. Yeah. So I can see – listen, if I'm the Jags, if I'm Balky, if I'm Peterson, I'd rather go the IUK route. I'm not as much worried about the future. Now, you can't mortgage the future, but I'm not as much worried about the future. But you've got to be able to dance with these guys and give them what they want and then sign the – sign a Nayuk to the deal. What really makes more business sense, in my opinion, is trading up and going to get one of these top three guys. Mm. You give up capital, it's cheaper, you have more maneuverability on the cap down the road, someone's and you're got growing a player you. with Trevor Lawrence. Someone's got to trade with you still. And somebody's and some, still got to trade but, with you. And sometimes we've heard that the Jaguars necessarily aren't the best trading partners sometimes. 
I, I do think it's easier to trade in the draft, and, and I say that and I don't know. I, that'd be actually a good question. Um, maybe that's a good draft launching question this week. There we go. I just came up with it. Brainstorming on the remember. spot. But is it easier to trade in the draft or like before the draft for a player? So like th- this circumstance, like okay. trade for an Ayuk or trade with like the Atlanta Falcons. What's he? And the answer is going to be very like politically correct. Well, they're both very difficult. You got to get them to do this. Yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah. But yeah. but in reality, what's more? See, I think it's easier to trade in the draft. Correct. And the reason I say that is because. You know Atlanta, if you gauge the teams correctly, and this is part of your job, by the way, as a GM, in my opinion, is you've got to be, okay, let's just say Atlanta at number eight. Well, hey, they'll be willing to come down to 17 because guys like Jared Verse or whatever else might still be available or you, know, you name it, right? Or maybe they're looking at corner. Let's just say they really want a corner and you got you can pick your litter at corner probably right around 17. And they're going to accumulate more picks and it's a new regime. And so that guy wants new picks, so he wants to build this team and build it his way, and GMs love picks. So like, I think trading with, again, in this instance, the Atlanta Falcons is a much easier deal than maybe trading with the San Francisco 49ers who really don't want to give up that piece but kind of feel obligated if you throw a very good offer their way to give up that piece. I mean, if Kevin Costner in draft day has taught us anything, Brent, that emotion happens more during the draft than it does before that the draft. That is true, too. That was pretty, pretty much a documentary about how the draft is – shaped that's true so I, I was kidding it's not a documentary at all <laughs> that was a, it's a ridiculous it's real movie. life and, and jackson looks ridiculous in that movie by the way too i mean okay we say that draft days played out real life in, in many instances no I, I hear you man and and we say all this stuff where it's easier to trade on draft day but then how come the jaguars had all their picks last year now that's a good point now i mean that's i'm, I'm seeing point. one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen was it last year? Thirteen draft picks, Brent. Okay, but I can I can I at least uh, people stressed out. I mean, that's, that's a lot of new era draft day hats they had to mark up, get sizes for. Okay, let me let me say this though. Okay, we're talking about in the first round, and and I don't know, and I'm not telling you that there's a huge distinction here. Okay, but I do think it muddies it up the later rounds you get because you probably have like five or six guys on your board, and it doesn't. You're not as needy in position. Yeah, but I also you know I, mean? I feel like what defines you. As a GM is finding those diamonds in the rough. I get it. Is finding those guys later on in the rounds. But I'm just asking, is it easier or harder? Like, by the time you get to the third round and you want to trade up, there might be four guys left on the board that people covet or really covet or you in the same team covet. Well, they don't want to give that up because they don't have as many options later on. Now, look what the Jags did do last year. They traded twice in the first round because that first round, they could could trade with the Bills and – was it the Giants they maybe traded with, whoever else they traded with? Mm. And and they were like, well, we know these guys aren't going to take the tackle. We know he's not going to take the tackle. We're not, we can still do this. So that's what I mean. You're a little more honed in in that first round on what the other team is kind of looking for okay. rather than just like this BPA and the board gets really wide. Yeah. So I, that's why I think in the first round is easier. But you do bring up a good point. The Jags had trouble. They said they had trouble trading up for, for other players in last year's draft and ended up with 13 of them. Mm-hmm. I do think it's easier to draft. That's a good point you brought up, too, is emotion. The emotion does play into it on draft day. Like, whether you want – they want to admit it or not. They say take out the emotion, but I think it does. Yeah. And we see fist pumps on draft day for a reason. <laughs> right? I mean, you get all these teams with go back and – I mean, they're like celebrate. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll never forget it. Uh, I think it was uh, – was it Monachino? Ted Monachino? I uh, was the defensive line coach Okay, when they got Harvey. Okay. And, and his quote was, I was so excited I jumped up in the, see the ceiling tiles. Yeah, he yeah. He punched a hole through the ceiling tile. Dang. But Because they were so excited to get sure. Derek Harvey. Yeah. Well, then there's some holes getting punched in the dry race boards, I'm With sure. all due respect, hey, the hey. ceiling tile did by as much as oh, Brent, oh, Harvey. I'm, 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 I'm getting out of frame for this one. <laughs> oh, by the way. <laughs> I, I didn't say anything, but man, Harvey's a good dude. Yeah, I know. And I, I know. know. But I know, yeah, where he was, listen... Where he was drafted. Sorry to make you uncomfortable. What, was, what, what he was expected <laughs> to do, obviously, it didn't work out. What's he doing now? Not a while. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it's, I haven't. I feel like he, like in terms of social media and everything, he's kind yeah, of off he's the a, grid. Yeah, so. he's an like off the grid he's guy. He's just living his life, man. Good for him. Enjoy the, I hope he did. Enjoy the cash. I mean, look, the bottom line is he made a lot of money. Hopefully, he did well with the money. Yes. Yeah, hopefully. You know, that's, uh, it wasn't his fault they picked him. 
No. That's what I always say. Like, we put so much blame on, like, the player sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but never was Tyson Alawala's fault they picked him number 10. No, for sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and obviously, he's, is now, he still playing? Tyson? Is he going to play uh, another year? Um, I don't think he's a, officially retired yet or anything, so maybe he comes back to Detroit. <sighs> I think he's a free agent. Tyson's still doing it. Can you imagine what that uh, – I wonder – What do you guys call that when you keep adding on? Like, he's, you would tell me about Meester's. Oh, thing, talking yeah. about, like, the – well, like, your pension. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, a year of service. He just keeps adding and adding. Yeah. Well, first of all, Meester has like eight daughters. So, yes. like, yeah, he had to. I mean, you're the service for you sure. You say Meester uh, is now a head coach in Iowa. Really? High school. He was just named the head coach out there. Good for him. He's the offensive coordinator. Last okay. Year. Um, I'm, I'm really curious about to look this up, Brent, in terms of the 2010 draft class when I was selected and how many guys are actually left playing from that draft class? Because. Mm-hmm. Tyson's got to be the one of the only ones that are left. And if that's the case, what is it going to say if he's like essentially the last man standing in that draft class and people want to give him crap all the time saying, yeah, you know, it was a wasted pick. They reach for him, yada, yada, yada. The guy's still playing in the league. And when I say playing in the league, it's not like he's riding the bench. He's still getting meaningful reps. He's he had, had a me- very good career. He had meaningful reps in Detroit in the playoffs. I saw him. So I- if, if he's truly the last man standing, Jaguars fans want to say he was drafted way too high. I don't know. I think he's always a team still want to play. I for think him. he's always a very debatable pick. Like, would you take a guy at Ted Tyson Alualo's career and you could count on him for fifteen years, or do you need the splash play for five, six years at ten, at the top ten? I think most people would say you need the top ten splash play, but the. I, I think you can argue as a really good pick. I mean, it's been a, it was a good pick for the Jags. He played a long time here, and then he almost came back here. And obviously, he's played a long time in Pittsburgh. Um, like in terms of busts, I'm not sure you can even go there with uh, with Alu All right, here we go. Sam Bradford, Sue McCoy. You tell me if any of these guys. Oh, Trent Williams. He's still playing. Trent Williams still playing. Yeah. Uh, Eric Berry, Russell Okung, Joe Barry's Hayden. Gone. Oh, Kung's done, right? Yeah. I believe so. Uh, Rolando McLean, CJ Spiller, Tyson, uh, Anthony Davis, uh, Ryan Matthews, Brandon Graham. Is Graham still going for the Eagles? I think Graham – well, Graham's doing – I saw NFL Network stuff. I'm not sure oh, if okay. he finally he retired. Or, I, it might be just uh, – Is he the one that came – didn't somebody just come back and go back to the Eagles? Was it Graham? I don't, I don't know. know. We'll check yeah, out. Yeah, Earl yeah. Thomas, Jason Pierre-Paul. Is Pierre-Paul still playing? Brandon Graham is active. Jason Pierre-Paul is playing – so I think still too as well. Wow. Okay, some, before some Derek left. Morgan, uh, I a potty. Uh, my, my guy potty from Idaho. I think he's done. Yeah, I think so. Good too. offensive lineman. Uh, Pouncey, Sean Weatherspoon. Uh, Spoon's done. Kareem Jackson, Jermaine Gresham, Demarius Thomas, Bulaga. How about Bulaga? Is he still Bulaga's done. done. He's done now. Yeah. Uh, Des Bryant, Tebow, Williams, Dan Williams, uh, Devin McCourty. Uh, Jared, o- Jared Odrick was picked in that draft. Yeah. Kyle Wilson, Javid Best, Jerry Hughes. Jerry Hughes, is he still going? Let me look him up quick. I'm pretty sure Hughes was with, he might have been with Houston recently. Check on that one. Checking. Uh, Patrick Robinson, Roger Saffold. Is Saffold still playing? Jerry Hughes played with Houston last year. He's still active. Uh, I'm sorry? Say- Roger Saffold? Uh, Chris Cook, Brian Price, Dexter McCluster, Nate Allen, T.J. Ward, Aurelius Ben was in that draft. Uh, Kowski was in that draft, by the way. Saffold was on the practice squad last year for Cleveland. (laughs) Really? What the hell is he on the practice squad still? (laughs) Jeez, man. Golly, man. I mean. So that's six. Anyway, I'm up to the top 40 picks, and that's six guys. That's actually still playing, but now, I mean, really on the back end. Of course, all these guys are on the back end playing some 14, uh, 15 years. In the NFL. All right, let's take a break. Uh, we'll come back. We'll, uh, I, I said something about the receiver position. Have we gone all in on the receiver position here in Jacksonville to the point where now the Jags can't win if they don't take receiver? Like, do they almost have to fall victim to the noise? You better believe it. I, I, I think that happens, by the way. And I wonder if that's where we're at with the Jags. Like, I think we do a poll question. Re- receiver or bust feels like real deal. Oh, if you don't get a, number one. Right, if you don't get a real deal receiver, we ride at noon. <laughs> yes. That's okay. We move and we ride. We, we That's going to be in the second part. We move, we ride. <laughs> the Jags have really rallied from the we move era. <laughs> you, you got some jerseys going to get the job done? <laughs> nah. Riot's still coming. Uh, we'll be back on the Brent and Austin show.
What started out as Better People, Better Projects just keeps getting, well, better. That's Better Exterior Solutions, ready to help you create a better outdoor experience. Check this out. Motorized pergolas are the latest in technology to transform your outdoor space. Beautiful day? Let the sun shine through. Summer rainstorm? These pergola systems close automatically to keep the weather out. From residential to commercial uses, Better Exterior Solutions has products customized to meet virtually any existing architectural structure. With retractable awnings, screens, and hurricane shutters too, if you want unparalleled quality and expertise, you need Better Exterior Solutions. Get a free estimate by visiting BetterExteriors.com or calling 904-902-4999. Better Exterior Solutions. Experience better. It's the place we party in football season with Jaguars All Access. Welcome to String Sports Brewery, everybody. Say hello to our guest tonight. That is Trevor Lawrence. You can bring your party or event to String Sports Brewery in Springfield any day and any time. Rehearsal dinners, corporate events, birthdays here at Strings. You can enjoy the inside area and the outside area. Good for any weather, good for any occasion. Watch the games, play the games, shoot some hoops, beer, yeah, they have that. Plenty of choices. And sure, this is a brewery, but Strings is also a restaurant, and the food is fantastic. A full menu made from scratch meals. And if you need String Sports Brewery to help with a party at your place, they cater too. Family, beer, food, sports, Spring Sports Brewery in Springfield. I'm Max News Shacks, First Alert Meteorologist Garrett Beaton. While the sun is up and it's going to be a beautiful day. Sometimes you just need a day to yourself. And Garrett's First Alert Forecast makes sure you're ready to go out and enjoy. Garrett and the Action News Jacks This Morning team helping you start your morning right. Discover how good your water can be with a new Kinetico softener and drinking water system. Kinetico's twin tank non-electric softeners are the most efficient softeners available, and their drinking water systems remove up to 99% of contaminants. We know that at our home. You can find out as well. Right now, you can save $1,000 or more when you bundle the Kinetico Premier softener with a Kinetico K5 drinking water system. The experts at CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing will test your water for free and determine your water score. Don't know your water score? Well, CGC will find Find out and recommend the appropriate Kinetico water treatment solutions to improve it. The higher your water score, the better your water. Call 904-552-1242 or visit cgcwater.com. That's 904-552-1242, cgcwater.com. Financing options are available with approved credit. CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I'm a proud customer of CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing, an authorized independent Kinetico dealer. Florida license number CFC 143-2579. Community. That's who we serve. It's the people. Yes, yeah, the people. Demanding answers because the truth matters. When are you going to do the job? Listening and getting help to those who need it. I just appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. It's about telling stories from deep inside our neighborhoods, informing you, building connections, tracking storms. Serious storm situation, the kind of which we rarely see. Holding people accountable. You were getting at the truth. That's who we are. Action News Jacks. The friendliest golf course in town, the Golf Club at Southampton. Local golfers have no shortage of options when it comes to picking a course to play here in Northeast Florida year round. Yet time and time again, I find myself here at the Golf Club at Southampton. Easy to get to off 210 in St. Johns County. It's family owned and operated and renowned for being one of the area's most player friendly. That's just one of the reasons we hold the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18 charity golf tournament here each fall. The Mark McCumber design layout is great for all skill levels of golfers, from the guys who bomb it a mile on the range to golfers like me who are just happy to put it in the fairway, which Southampton has very accommodating fairways. And if you need new clubs, come down to the Pro Shop. They'll fit you up 
and get you a nice new set like they did for me. For more information on membership or to book a tee time and see for yourself, head over to GolfSouthampton.com or call the clubhouse at 904-287-7529. The Golf Club at Southampton. It's the official home of the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18. Make it your home for golf too. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. To Leah Scott, she played her high school basketball uh, at uh, St. John's Country Day, and she went to Arkansas, really did a nice job. I think she had 22 points a game at Arkansas, transferring now to Auburn, War Eagle, uh, for Talia Scott. She stays in the SEC West. That's what's so weird. Again, some of us just can't get used to this, that she goes from Arkansas in the SEC West, Yeah, stays in the SEC West to Auburn. And I got to believe the NIL money is probably pretty good. She's a really good player. She's got $100 bills, Brent, in that picture right there. <laughs> yeah. Just, I mean, if that was me in college, I'm like, forget this. I'm just taking them and walking out. Yeah. She's, uh, she's a really good player. She's, yeah. She she can score it. And she had a heck of a freshman season at Arkansas. Like, you never know how it's going to translate. And she was terrific. And we've had some really good women's basketball players come out of Jacksonville. Obviously, Rebalt's program has always been so strong. St. John's Country Day is doing a nice job with their program, too. I think Talia Scott started at Oakleaf before transferring to St. John's Country Day. So um, she'll, she'll make some noise in the SEC. Do you think John Calipari is in shambles? <laughs> Maybe could ask her to play with the men? <laughs> yeah, maybe. That's a well, good Brent, point. Well, they have no team right now, so they not have sure no how team. much you've been paying attention. People. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Uh, the, but did you see the Kentucky yeah. entrance? Yeah, I did. That was kind of a cool thing, actually. They got what the 1996 championship team. Yeah, they do it. I tell you what, they, hey, it's basketball is king in Kentucky. I mean, it's king. It's like royalty, but it still is surprising to me that they couldn't get like the guy they wanted. They couldn't keep Calipari, and they couldn't get. The first three guys that they wanted. With all due respect to Pope, and it might work out. Sometimes it works out better that way, right? He's a Kentucky guy. He's not a bad coach by any means. I mean, they got a good coach. And then they had 24,000 in an arena to watch a press conference. <laughs> guys, I've been to a lot of news conferences. They ain't that exciting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I saw that, and it made me think, and I get Kentucky's, like, in terms of basketball and collegiate basketball, yes, it, it it's king. I understand that. I always held, like, Indiana – in that kind of regard as well? Totally gone. I mean. What happened to Indiana? Yeah. And, like, you go to that state, it's still basketball, basketball, basketball. But, like, in terms of the Hoosiers, like, if they got a new coach, I don't, I don't see 20,000 people showing up for that coach. Nah, they've uh, – I, I hate to say it, too. My buddy Ben, my college roommate, he's a huge Hoosier fan. And I was thinking of this recently because of the Purdue success. Because, mm-hmm. obviously, Indiana-Purdue, huge rivalry. And – Purdue has just passed them by so much. I mean, Indiana has once in a while they had, uh, I think with Davis, they had a little pop, right, where they, they made a nice little run. Yeah. But they, like, that's, that's what I was talking about, I guess, a couple weeks ago, talking about Kentucky and, like, Kentucky fans get so mad. But you look up in five years and 10 years and you're no longer really the blue blood you thought you were. I mean, our Duke and North Carolina and Kentucky. Uh, the Arizonas of the world or even the Kansases of the world that have been so good, are they going to look up and it's going to be a different landscape in college basketball? And I think Indiana is a great example of it. I mean, they were fantastic. They were one of the teams. They love it more than anything else. Yeah. And they still can't win in this era for whatever reason. They can't figure it out. And and they, I mean, the other teams that I mentioned have been able to figure it out, but they can't. And Purdue has before Indiana has. Like, that's got to be such a... You gotta crush you, right? Oh it's almost gosh. like it'd be like if Vanderbilt won a, a championship before Tennessee. That's a yeah, and and I don't I think Purdue has been a better basketball program than like sure, Vanderbilt yeah, yeah, in that, yeah. but I think but I'm good, saying you know like a little bro, like a like a that's you're not even context. worried about a cut you know it's like a distant cousin you're not even worried about it's like cousin Eddie from um, Christmas Vacation <laughs> like get who cares about this dude you know but huh that dude I that's a that's a good point like I was thinking. See, I think we've seen a little bit of this in the state of Texas. Now, Texas w- makes a great run this year yeah. back at it. But Texas A&M felt like the more important football program for a bit. And cool. how about what Houston has done in football and basketball? To kind of, Now, they were old, years ago, years ago, years mm-hmm. ago, they were, they were a, a threat. But I never think nationally people thought of Houston. 
Well, now you kind of do. I mean, they even got good in football for a bit. They've been really good in basketball. Yeah. Uh, but Texas A and M has shared that mantle well, I with mean, Texas now. Texas Tech for this is back when I was in college. Texas Heck, Tech was TCU. that team. TCU, uh, yeah, except the Texas Longhorns, and now they have a resurgence finally. Yeah, I mean TCU until last year, right? TCU had been to a national championship game more recent than Texas. Like, what in the world? Mm-hmm. Right? You've lost your grip a little bit. I think the difference. Baylor too. Don't forget about Baylor. Oh, Baylor. Throw yeah, Baylor that's in that a great mix. Call. I, I do think the one thing you would say about the state of Texas is there's so many schools. That you have to compete with, it's such a big state. But you always but felt Indiana, like the long. It's, it's three. It's I Notre hear Dame, you. Purdue, and Indiana. But like when I was a kid, though, growing up, it seemed like Texas was that school, though, Brent. You know, yeah. it was. I don't, yeah. Yeah. Well, and not only that, I mean, they got their own network. They have different money. But I guess it shows you that you can go wrong. Correct. Like you, you can f- lose your way. And and really, the crazy thing is, like Indiana basketball is a little bit like Miami football. Sure. Have not been able to find yeah. their way back. And, and it's about that same time frame. Uh, you know, we thought Miami was about to be back. Eh, they weren't. And so they've had a couple of It's the same runs. story every single year. So uh, pretty interesting, though. 24,000 at that, uh, that Kentucky News Conference and kind of rooting for the guy. Uh, we'll see what happens with Calipari at Arkansas. And the, like, again, I, I just think we're going to look up in five years and we're going to be like, who's dominating college basketball? <laughs> Who are these teams? But keep in mind, we did over the last two – Dec- UConn has dominated college basketball the last two decades. This is correct. Villanova yeah. over the last decade. And, and again, these are proud schools, but the, people think of 10 other schools before they think of those guys dominating. If, mm-hmm. if you brought someone back from the dead that died 20 years ago and you said, guess who the best program in college basketball is since you passed? Yeah. They ain't picking con- UConn. No, probably not. Probably not. No. <laughs> not, not at all. No, not even close. So uh, let's go back to football. I asked this question before. Oh, actually, I, I'll get to um, Stephen. He wants to uh, talk uh, briefly because it will be a brief discussion okay. about um, the Tom Gamble news that came out yesterday uh, back in the front office of the Jags. He was actually in the front office a couple of years ago, left to go to Michigan, and now he's back. What does it say? Does it mean anything? Keep in mind, their, their front office looks a little bit like this in terms of the names you know. It's bulky. Ethan Waugh, who I think is a significant player in their front office as the assistant general manager, and now Tom Gamble uh, rejoins the organization in a role after his run with Michigan and Harbaugh. Um, again, ties to San Francisco all around right there in, in their front office. What's fascinating, and I said this yesterday, it's like when you see the Gamble news and – He's part of it. What I think of under Shad Khan is fascinating. Gus Bradley hired Doug Marone as an offensive line coach. He ended up being the head coach. Dave Caldwell hired Trent Baalke as an assistant. After being out of the league for years, he ends up being the GM. Trent Baalke hires Ethan Waugh and now Tom Gamble back. Are we looking at the future GM of the Jaguars in either Gamble or Ethan Waugh? I mean... Is that just coincidence, or is is this planned by Shad? I don't know. Oh, that's a good call. I would think... Okay, I mean, let's talk about this, though. Of all the GM candidates, do you think you're going to roll with Tom Gamble over everybody else? I mean, like, I, I think... He was a candidate one time. I remember his name being bounced around. I can't remember exactly what time frame... And it might have been when Trent got the job with um, with Urban. Yeah. But I want to say because he had worked again, like there was a little bit of that Harbaugh tie, if I'm not mistaken. So he had worked with the college coach. And I mean, I, I think to, that was it. To me, it's more of a guy who obviously has a lot of experience working with Michigan players, has a lot of experience, I'm sure, with recruiting players from the Big Ten. So he probably has a good feel of who some of these guys are. Yeah, I like and that. And you could use some of that. But once again, it, to me, you're bringing him in like the last second. You know, before the draft. So, how much can you really know? How much can you, due diligence can you really put in? But I just think from bringing a guy who has a lot of experience with college football players, it's only going to help you in the draft. I would think that that was the thought. So, so, do you read anything? Do you think it's total coincidence, or is this some crazy Hunger Games scenario here in Jacksonville? <laughs> Hunger <or something>? Games. <laughs> Like, I, are, I mean, are the odds in our favor right now? Is that what you're saying? Like, I mean, isn't that some crazy irony over the last, what is that, eight years? Three guys that have been hired have yeah. replaced. 
I'm not going to look too far into it as this is the next GM of your Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm looking at it as, hey, we need more help in the draft. So let's bring in a guy in who has good knowledge of a lot of these players coming out of the Big Ten. Yeah. I, I, I just want, like, right now, <laughs> I, I just wonder if they will eventually be the GM, either Tom Gamble or Ethan Wall. And, and yeah. remember now, there are retirement conversations and, and rumors. So they might be, it might be a smart move. Get him in there, all that stuff. But if Gamble, let's just say this. If a guy like Gamble was interviewed around the Urban Meyer hiring time, yeah. or at least poked around on, and now he's back in the organization, he was in organization in 22. Again, I don't know if all that, like, I, I just, I feel like he was a candidate at one time where his name was being thrown around. And right now my mind goes to the Meyer. It might even have been before that. Might have been at the time, like, when Coughlin was into, I can't even remember it. But if that is the case, are we looking at, a guy in Tom Gamble that could be the future GM of the Jaguars. Like I, I, I have no idea. I just find it fascinating that we've seen this before. We've seen a trend for that to happen. That this says like Ethan Waugh or Tom Gamble are going to be the GM someday. The Jags. No, for sure. I mean, it, listen, you you could be onto something. You know, and you also thought that the Jaguars are taking a wide receiver in free agency or in this period, and we'll see. You know, not looking too good right now, Brent. We'll see. If anything, maybe it shows, hey, Roman Wilson, welcome to Jacksonville. <laughs> Why does he Michigan? Like, yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe. You know, like, yeah. I don't know. If, like, you, yeah, there's there's a little bit. I mean, definitely hey, got the if inside. you want some tea leaves, Jacksonville. Well, there's a bunch of guys, the offensive well, linemen, but the, the corner. I'm just saying in the past, in 2010, when the Jaguars were interested in bringing me in, they did hire my former college coach, Matt Griffin, as a tight ends coach before I got drafted here. Well, and they just hired, uh, the Jags hired uh, Josh Allen's yeah. coach, right? Mm-hmm. Guy that coached him um, on the defensive side of the ball. So, yeah, uh, listen, I, I think all that stuff, makes, just keep it in mind. So but, this is going <laughs> to turn into what it was last year for the Eagles and the, the Bulldogs. It's going to be all Michigan Wolverines coming to Jacksonville yeah. now. Well, listen, I, I, I think the Jags have done a much better job of plucking from the better teams in the country and yeah, I don't yeah. know if you go wrong there I mean the Eagles no, have been I'm pretty right. good and if if we start getting Michigan players in Jacksonville I don't know if that's a bad thing uh necessarily but I also think it the depth goes way beyond that uh for a guy like Gamble anyway that's the in, the interesting thing for me is that is the fact that we are we looking at the future GM because yeah. and again Ethan Wall might be that guy too like I have no idea or they might go outside whenever that comes but we have a guy in Jacksonville that did flirt with or at least reportedly flirted with retirement. Hasn't history kind of shown us, though, now, though, Brent, that it helps to have maybe that vetting process of, hey, let's go and interview some guy. Like, I'm I just to appoint somebody in house. Like, okay, let's, for the sake of this drill, let's just say, worst case scenario, this team comes out and they win seven or eight games. All right. Underachieved. They blew it. Horrible season. Jags fans are upset. Probably got a clean house. Wouldn't you much rather see it done in a way where, hey, let's take in everybody that we can, all right? It, it should be a highly coveted job. We still have Trevor Lawrence. So let's go ahead and have this vetting process now. Let's not just, okay, let's bring somebody up in-house because, well, they've been here before. Eventually, I feel like if it does go bad, it's like a band-aid. Remove the past. Start completely fresh. I would say, yeah, probably, but it hasn't been the way. Like, I mean, why did Doug Marone get the job? when nobody else would have given him a head coaching job in 2017? Well, the answer was easy. He was one of, like, two guys that would work with Tom Coughlin in the role that they had kind of put in front of them. And so when Doug Marone was hired as an offensive line, did I see him as an interim coach? Yeah, did I see him as the coach? I thought when they got rid of Gus, they would get rid of everybody. Yeah. Right? They didn't. And same goes for Trent. I mean, with the Caldwell stuff. I didn't see – I don't think anybody in their right mind thought Trent Baalke – would be the GM of the Jags like a year or two after joining the Jaguar staff after being out of the league for a few years. And yet, here we are, right? So, like, for whatever reason, I, I, I'm telling you, this looks more like a business model to me than anything else. Mm-hmm. That get the guy in, see what evaluate, see what's wrong, and, and then you got to also see if he's the guy. I'm not telling you that they're just going to throw somebody in. But at this stage, like, I keep an eye on these moves now. <laughs> I just really think... <laughs> first thing that entered my mind is, 
all right, these two guys have a leg up to be the next GM whenever it either goes wrong or again. It doesn't necessarily have to go wrong. If Bulky wins this year and the Jags win this year and they do well, based on what happened, almost happened last year or could have happened last year or reportedly happened last year, maybe Bulky's done. Mm-hmm. And then the next guy takes – and then it's easier to put one of these guys in, right, because they continue after coming off a good season. Keep an yeah. eye on it. It's April 15th, 2024. I said it here. We'll see if it comes to fruition or not. We'll yeah. keep an eye on it. Um, the thing that we're really waiting to see and keep an eye on is, and see if it materializes is the uh, receiver position. Yes. And so I've, I, I've wondered if we've reached the point of no return on the receiver. I think you kind of feel like we have. Uh, the Jags don't have to take receiver in the first round, but doesn't it feel like we are basically all saying they have to take receiver in the first round? Yeah, I mean, that seems to be the collective narrative here. Now, I get it. Social media is just a small percentage of a fan base, but it's also a very loud percentage of the fan base. Yeah, I think if you're not talking wide receiver with the first round, whether you trade up, maybe you trade back, get some more capital, but I know you don't like that either, Brent. Whatever the case may be, if we aren't talking about another weapon for Trevor Lawrence, I think people will be disappointed. Is... That a fair place we've put them in? Not that life's fair, is it? Is it GM. a fair place? Like, I mean, are we, have we gone overboard basically on receiver? Like, there's no. other ways that we've talked about pass rusher. People yeah. have talked about corner. Uh, some people I don't really get have talked about offensive line or whatever. But the, I mean, there there are you can you can get a good player. It's not a receiver. Sure, yeah, you can get a good player from corner. You can get a good player from edge. I, I understand all of that. I think right now, and I get depth as a thing, right? So right now where it stands, as a cornerbacking core, are the Jaguars top 15? Tyson Campbell, Darby, who's playing nickel? And uh, is uh, Antonio, do we really know what the nickel's going to be at? Savage, Darnell Savage. Savage, But he's playing like the kind of the jack of all trades though, isn't he? Yeah, he's going to play. He'll be the nickel. Could that be top 15? I mean, maybe. I mean, it depends on Tyson Campbell, really. And if we think that Tyson Campbell is going to progress, then yeah, I'm, I'm confident in calling that. Okay, how do we feel about Edge right now? Well, we know what Edge is going to look like with hopefully Trayvon Walker playing on the edge with Josh Allen. I like that a lot. Obviously, you need depth. Obviously, you need rotation. But right now on paper, even you, you want to throw, I don't know, who's this still have Abdul, right, or something? Yeah, they do. Okay. Even if you yeah. throw like Abdul in there, it's a good point. Well, guess what? You still have a top ten, if not top five, edge rushing core just because of Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker alone. And guess what? Now you have the interior as well, so it takes a little off their plate. I'm fine with that. At wide receiver, and I get take away Travis Etienne, take away Evan Ingram from the wide receiver position. Can you call Gabe Davis, Christian Kirk, and Zay Jones top ten? No, probably not. Can you call him top fifteen? There's an argument there, but I don't. I don't really know. So if that's the conversation we're having, I'm going wide receiver. Yeah. Uh, listen, I, I think all the. I, I'm not sitting here saying it doesn't make sense for the Jags to take wide receiver. We have talked about this all around, and they have too, is my guess. Uh, when we're talking about this, I kind of feel like, okay, what if we were in those room? What if we were in the room? What would you present? Like you try to make it a real life situation. We feel like we know the Jags pretty well. We don't know exactly how they feel and how we should feel about each prospect coming up. Are those three receivers that everybody's talking about, group think has got us in, in the top 10 and can't miss? Is that how they feel about it? You know, right or wrong, is that how they feel about it? How do they feel about Brian Thomas? How do they feel about the depth of receiver? How do they feel what they can get at number 48 or their ability to move up and go get another good player, corner, pass rusher, receiver in that second round? Like, these are all questions they have to answer. So I think we've talked about enough to get to the sense that, hey, this makes a lot of sense for the Jags to go invest in receiver, um, whether it is an Iuka Higgins or trading up to get one of the better ones. That has not changed. I just think now that we have gotten to the point collectively that we are so much on that train. Mm. Not just us. I think a lot of the fan base on that train that it's like there are going to be some boo birds at number 17 if they don't land a receiver. And I do think there's other ways to get good players and other ways to do this. 
Uh, heck, I mean, we went over, I think, the Mel Kuyper draft. I don't even know if he had receiver in the first two rounds, the Jags take him. He didn't. He didn't. Yeah. So, I mean, there are other ways to do it and still be a good football team. But that doesn't matter on draft night <laughs> to the fans and everybody else. I've got a feeling if a week from Thursday at number 17 or wherever they pick that they don't get wide receiver, we're coming in here on Friday and we are giant disappointment. You think Trevor cares? Yeah, I, I think Trevor cares, but I don't think they think like we do either. Like I don't think he's sitting there pouting Thursday night if they don't get X receiver. I think he gets the whole plan. I mean, I, I think – and here's why I say that, Austin. Because there's a really good chance that while you and, and the rest of us and, – and I'm not telling you I disagree – wouldn't say, hey, the Jags are a top-10 receiving core. My guess is Trevor feels like they are. Trevor has all the confidence in the world in Zay Jones and Christian Kirk hmm. and obviously includes Evan Ingram. And includes uh, Gabe Davis now. I don't know that, but I think he probably does. It's like it's like you saying, hey, even though we went two and whatever this year, I love Joe Cullen. Joe Cullen's the greatest. And somebody on the outside might be like, no, he's not. Like, you know, like, sure. look, wait, they didn't do anything. Or they did this or that or whatever. But those are the, I think that's the difference between inside the building. I think that's the difference between loyalty. I think that's the difference between knowing what guys are and who they are and going through it with them more than looking at it from our point of view, or we're just looking at chess pieces on a board. Yeah, but I'm also looking at trying to help your guy out, all right? And Houston did that. Yeah, I get it. Like, Houston's a prime example of, like, Houston, listen, of all the teams in the NFL to go after and get another one receiver, Houston did not have to do that. No, they didn't. Like, if you're Houston, it's like, all right, CJ Stroud, yeah, we good got rookie you. year. Let's get you a better running back. Okay, check. Offensive line stays together, check. Resign Dalton Schultz, check. All right, go out there and keep on doing your thing because you're supposed to be that guy. Oh, no, by the way, let's go ahead and get you Stephon Diggs. Here, here's another piece for you to play with. Yeah, we'll give up a second a second round pick for it. That's about it. Oh, yeah, and that's, oh, by the way, we're not going to pay him. We're going to avoid his contract and whatever happens, happens. But here's another toy for you to play with. All right, Houston understands the assignment. The Jaguars can say, yeah, we like what we got. Trevor Lawrence, say Jones, Gabe Davis, Christian Kirk. That's great. But to me, the difference is Houston goes, huh, we like what we got, but let's get even better. Yeah. And Jacksonville's right now, all indications is, we like what we got. Let's see. Yeah. I, 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 again, you're asking me to look at the, this is the way we look at it. I don't know if players always look at it that way. I don't think. Trevor's sitting up at night and being like, are they going to get me more? Are they going to do more for me? Now, his team might, his agent might, his, uh, we might for him. But I don't know if that enters Trevor's mind. I, I, I don't think it does. Like, I think he would have had confidence in a guy like um, Fortner coming back in. But they did upgrade that spot. They did go help him out that spot. That was obviously a weak spot. And I think as much as Trevor wants to say in front of a microphone, and he might even tomorrow when he talks, I think he knows it deep down that, hey, we could have got better there. And they did. Or at least they, they look like they tried to. So I just have a hard time believing, and, and maybe I'm naive on this. I, I just think they di think different. I think he's loyal to those guys. I think he really believes in those guys. Now, he'll be glad to get another one. Glad to get another one. But I just don't think the top athletes in the world think about, poor me, they're not giving me another guy. And I think if you do go down that road, that's a dangerous road to get in because it's probably a very selfish view to look through. Do you think if Joe Burrow wouldn't have wanted Jamar Chase and they got Panay Sewell instead, do you think Joe Burrow had been pretty pissed off about it? Not as because pissed I off do. as you think. Okay. Not as pissed off as you think. I, I, uh, I, I don't think in year one year in – Coming off an ACL, mm -hmm. I think the organization could easily explain, Joe, we're protecting you. Well, yeah, that was the plan. And he said, no, I want Jamar Chase. I get it. Like, but I, think, I, I don't think there would have been this giant rift in the organization if they had gone with Penny Sewell and said, Joe, we know better. We've been doing this for a lot of years, and we are not getting you hurt. Hmm. Like why, that, as, as a player, as a person, as someone in their company, they're, they're trying to look out for you and your health. Like How is that a negative? Now, do you agree with it? No, nah, not really. But you also, at 22 years old, don't know everything. <laughs> you know. So, well, apparently he knew something, though, because it worked uh, listen, out pretty well. It's worked out well. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and it's probably great. It buys him loyalty and everything else. Correct. And now he's got to pick his spots too. He can't make every decision for the organization, right? No, absolutely. They're going to give you the leeway. But I, I do think, and once again, hindsight's twenty twenty. But listen, every draft expert, myself, everybody was saying they got to go offensive lineman. Like, forget Jamar Chase, Absolutely. Joe Burrow. Like, yeah. you have to go offensive lineman. What are you thinking? And Joe Burrow says, no, I want, you know, my old guy. I want Jamar Chase. And they abide by that. I think if they would have went Penny Sewell and Jamar Chase goes wherever else, maybe, maybe Jamar Chase goes to the Lions and balls out there. I think Joe Burrow would have been ticked off. And yeah. I, I think that would have stuck with him for a long time saying, we could have had this guy, but you didn't want to listen to me. So... I disagree in saying like he wouldn't have cared. I think he, he would have cared. I think he's that type of person where it's like, if you aren't going to value my opinion, then what am I doing here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And listen, uh, we don't know. Did Trevor go out and say, hey, we needed an upgrade at center? Mm-hmm. Maybe he did. Yeah. And maybe they listened, right? So, like, I don't, we don't know that dynamic. I think we tried to showcase that dynamic. I think a lot of that, you've played in the league. Like, there are conversations in locker rooms. They're they're not immune to everything going on outside, but also you know this. You guys live in your own bubble in that world. Like you're not living in our bubble. Like we are living in two different bubbles. Now, what I think has to be navig what you got to navigate as a player, especially one of of Trevor's ilk, and with so much responsibility on him, is your camp, your family, your everybody else who's chiming in, being like, dude, they got to go get you some more help. They got to look what they're doing. They got you know. Yeah. Then that starts to be like, wait, you didn't get me help. But that's a fine line between disbelief and what you already have. There's no he's going into these offseason conditioning workouts today, full belief in the receiving core that he has, whether they get him somebody else or not. No, without a doubt. And and I understand that. And that's the competitor and that's the championship pedigree of and Trevor that's the Lawrence. Leader, right? yeah. And that's the leader. Whatever I have, I can win with. I understand all of that. But I'm gonna say, as a person who follows the game, as a person who watches the game, usually if you're a quarterback in this league and you're a young quarterback, and I'll still put that moniker on Trevor Lawrence because we'll, we'll say that he lost a year with Urban Meyer and injuries last year, whatever you want to say. Still a young quarterback in this league, all right? But that excuse is running out pretty soon. But I'm going to say you look at any young quarterback who's had a lot of success in this league, you usually pair him with a, a number one receiver, and that goes hand in hand. I think quarterbacks who don't have that one receiver, that don't have that go-to guy, tend to falter a little bit. Now, is Christian Kirk that guy? Well, maybe, right? But, like, I see Justin Herbert with Keenan Allen. I saw Joe Burrow with T. Higgins. You know, I eventually, I mean, I don't think it did. Aaron Rodgers didn't have Devonta Adams right away, did he? Uh, Might have been a little bit. I can't remember how that one shook out. But my point is, and obviously now we talk about C.J. Stroud and, well, he had Nico Collins, and now he's got Stephon Diggs as well. The trend seems to be when you pair a quarterback with that go-to wide receiver, like I think they envisioned for Calvin Ridley, and you know they couldn't get the job done. I think that only helps you out. Yeah, I, listen, I get it. I, I think you're right, um, but I think also a lot of those decisions that were made were made from the front office to help them out more than the player. Not everyone. I'm sure there's player input, but I think there's – what I think your point is about the Trevor stuff, and we've got to get going to break, but the – I think it comes up in the negotiation table in hindsight. Like, so you asked if Joe Burrow would have been pissed off. I said, no, I don't think he would have. Mm-hmm. But I do think a couple years later, if he is watching Detroit go to a Super Bowl or somebody else go to Super Bowl because they got Jamar Chase, that's where he's annoyed by it. That's where, like, see, guys, I told you if we had this guy – what we would have done. Does that mean he doesn't sign a contract? Probably not. But I think that's where you can get a little bit miffed. Be- same thing here. You want to go bring back, okay, my turnovers? You want to bring up, uh, you, you got hurt? You want to bring up this stuff in the Trevor conversation about contract? Well, look what these other teams are doing around their quarterback. Look what Tua has. Look what Joe has. Look what Herbert's had. You know, look what now uh, Stroud has. Correct. Right? Like, that's where it comes up. I don't think it comes up in the present. I think it comes almost as a past look at what you've done to help me out. Mm. And mostly, I think, by the team more than the quarterback. I think the quarterback's going to be very confident in whoever he's got out there. And and part of that is what you just said. He's so confident in his own skill set that he thinks, Brent catching passes, we can win some football games. Like, I think you have to be that guy. Um, I hope he's that guy. 
in many respects that thinks that way. All right, let's take a break. Brent and Austin Show, we're live on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 network, actionnewsjacks.com, Action News Jacks app, easiest place to find us. Of course, all the social media channels show replays throughout the day as well if you missed any of it. So you can always see us all the time. Shock Your Mock is coming up in just a little bit. We revisit UFC 300. How was it? Austin gives us his analysis of that. So much more to still get to. And a new AI song on the way to In Northeast Florida, we love hanging out on the back patio, maybe grilling out lunch or dinner with the family, enjoying the good weather, or maybe enjoying the big game on the TV. Or maybe your favorite team in town, the Action Sports Jacks team. This is great, except for when it's really hot or the bugs start coming out. But what if you didn't have to worry about that? Titan Outdoor Solutions will make your outdoor area a comfortable spot, any time of the day, any time of the year. This makes too much sense. Titan Outdoor Solutions can give your home an upgrade. Customized pergolas, awnings, controlled shade, even retractable screens. The solution to beating the heat and the bugs and getting more use out of your home is Titan Outdoor Solutions. And this can even help prevent storm damage at your home. Living in Florida and living in your home is already good. Now make it great. Quality products, custom work, locally owned and operated. Visit TitanShuttersAndScreens.com or call 904-484-7580. Navigating to that perfect car can be a daunting task. Trust me, I understand, but if you want to find the perfect blend of sales and service for your automotive needs, look no further than the Tom Bush family of dealerships. Here at Tom Bush, they do things right. Dating back to 1970, they've been a staple in the community giving back and keeping everything local. With four different brands to choose from, BMW, Mazda, Volkswagen, and Mini, there's a car for every member of the family and the customer service is second to none. Looking to add an electric vehicle to your fleet, Tom Bush remains at the forefront of new technology with plenty of staff on hand to walk you through the future of driving and help eligible customers file for that EV tax credit. Whether you're looking for your future driver's first car or you want to step up to luxury and arrive in style, the Tom Bush family of dealership is the only stop that you need to make. Stop by the showroom or check out the inventory at TomBush.com. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. It might look quiet, but that's just a chance to admire the facilities on the campus of the University of North Florida Ospreys. The stretch run has arrived in college sports, and for the Ospreys, that means the end of the beach volleyball season coming soon. And critical series for UNF softball and on the baseball diamond for the Ospreys team. Tennis is trying to peak in time for April's A-Sun tourney as well. The postseason in golf is on the horizon, and track and field has its busiest stretch of the season. For news, schedules, and results, just go to unfospreys.com. Do you have ugly concrete around your home or business? Are you tired of concrete that is cracked, stained, or just plain ugly? Spartan Coatings range of products provides a surface that is non-porous, easy to clean, antibacterial, and slip resistant, all with superior durability. Living in Florida nearly my whole life, I know the toll our weather can take on a garage floor. That's why I had Matt and the crew from Spartan Coatings transform this space. And the best part? They did it in one day. It was a professional process from step one. The polyurea and polyaspartic system provide superior flexibility, is four times stronger than epoxy coatings, and will withstand temperatures high and low. Plus, it comes with a 20-year warranty. Whether it's a garage floor, patio, pool deck, driveway, or your interior flooring, Spartan Coatings has you covered. To get started transforming your ugly concrete surfaces, call 904-671-3930 or visit Spartan Coatings dot com today for your free quote. 
Everyone loves a good game night. Here you don't have to be the host. You don't have to clean up. They bring the food and drinks to you. And you can watch whatever you want on the big screens. It's more than a card room. It's a night full of fun with friends. Best Bet Jacksonville Orange Park. And now the newest location here in St. Augustine, right off 95 at exit 311. A brand new clean room. A full bar and menu. My favorite sushi in town. And I love the fries too. You don't have to just play poker at Best Bet. That's why I come over here to the table games and play one card poker. That's a pretty good card and a win. One card poker is like war as a kid. You against the dealer. And this isn't the only fun table game to play. A friendly staff, a lot of fun. It's a good night out at Best Bet Jacksonville Orange Park in the newest location in St. Augustine. You can be a serious player or a novice. It doesn't matter. If winning equals fun, you're a winner every time at Best Bet. I'll save you a seat and I'll see you down here at Best Bet St. Augustine. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Hey, there's a look at uh, the All-Pro Dad morning a couple of uh, days ago. Doug Peterson was out there as well with the uh, at the Jacksonville Jaguars facility. This is a, an event that Tony Dungy has spearheaded over the years, one of the good guys uh, in the sport of uh, football and uh, pretty cool. We might hear from Doug in just a little bit. I don't know if we can go right to him, so we'll wait uh, a, a minute or two and maybe hear from Doug talking about being a dad. Yeah, uh, we, we used to do this segment actually, and I'm gonna bring it back this year called Jags Dads. And we've done some stories over the years on like the Brad Meesters of the world. Mm-hmm. I think we did uh, David Garrard and others. And I was actually thinking of it coming in this morning, which is pretty wild because of Josh Allen. Now he's. I mean, when we were at the draft with Josh Allen in Tennessee, he had his little kid with him. And uh, his girlfriend at the time, and now they're married, and I think have three kids. I want to say, and so I mean, it's just fun to watch. I guess in a way, you watch these guys grow up. <laughs> you know, he's only twenty six years old, but you watch him grow up, and then you think about it bigger picture, and you know this. I mean, from Joe Collins to now a Doug Peterson, these guys have to be kind of father like figures inside a stadium for a bunch of young people with all different backgrounds, all different values, all different. Um, teachings like, it, and there's got to be. Like I always say it. It's really their psychologist in many respects, right? Any coach is. Yeah. But but I, I'm got to believe there's times where you got to kind of put your arm around a player and kind of act like that. No, without a doubt. And it's see, I think in college you get away with it a lot more because you're still shaping the mind, right? Like you're still teaching them how to be a man. Essentially, once you get to the NFL. You know, it's already grown men, but it's grown men from different backgrounds um, that have different belief systems. Some have families. Some like to go to the beach bars on, you know, on the weekend. So everybody's different. And, yeah, a, a, a real a real coach, a successful coach can take all those types of personalities and find some common ground, right? Because you don't want to, especially nowadays too, Brent, like, I mean, it's been 12 years, but – even now, it seems like any player that gets called out on that can't be themselves is going to like throw a fit. Yeah, it almost seems yeah, like yeah. right. And and to me, it, I remember this more about Jamal Williams in Detroit, and I forgot what that coach's name was, who I think now is the might be the offensive coordinator, but at the time was a running uh, running backs coach. And they asked about Jamal Williams because he always wore like the crazy anime do rags and stuff, and like some people, especially some oh, like Tom Coughlin, would have said. Probably take it off, right? Mike Dicka would have said, come on, man. What are we doing here? But I forgot what this guy's name was, but I watched the press conferences. It's like they asked him, what's the deal with Jamal Williams? And why is he like, is he kind of a distraction? And the guy goes, no, it's not a distraction at all. Like, this is Jamal Williams. This is who he is. We celebrate who he is because if he's not going to celebrate who he is, we don't get Jamal Williams. We, we, we get a shell of himself, you know? And arguably, Jamal Williams had his best season ever. In Detroit for that year. Now he's in uh, New Orleans behind Camara, but it goes to show you like when you can let players be themselves, you have an environment for players to be comfortable. That means everything. Now you have to keep it within reason, right? Like you can't <laughs> let players show up thirty minutes late to a meeting or practice something like that. But a real coach, a special coach, can take all those personalities and and make a mesh together. And I mean, I think Cullen did that. Pretty well. I think he's probably even changed his style now a little bit because yeah, yeah. it was that Belichick old school type of style, you know? 
And I think that's starting to kind of leave NFL locker rooms a little more. But you want to talk about our room? Tyson Alualu, Jeremy Mincy, Derek Harvey, Terrence Knighton. Like, we have personalities. Yeah, yeah. You know, and like I said, it takes a special guy to try to make all those personalities play for each other. Yeah, it's interesting. I would imagine, like, uh, from almost like a fatherly look or things that you remember now from Murray State to uh, the Cullens of the world or any Mike Malarkey or anybody else. Um, at the time, you're just soaking it up as football, or even now in the UFC world, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're getting coaching. So, but years later, you remember some of those things. Like you, you will talk about it on the show a decade yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, what was happening, which end up being kind of more life lessony type things that you don't even really know. You're getting kind of that fatherly yeah. treatment as a, as you're getting coached up. Yeah. It's kind of happening probably at the same time in, in many respects. And now you're probably sharing with your kid, correct? And you're like, son of a gun, I was in that. Damn meeting room, and yeah. that's what they said. Yeah, no, without a doubt. And, and some of them, like, I mean, listen, I have so many favorite memories. And you talk to any retired NFL player, he's going to tell you the locker room he misses the most, right? It's yeah, not yeah. the play, all that. And some of my favorite memories occurred in that defensive line room with Joe Collin at the helm. And some of my favorite memories, it was the interactions between Aaron Campman and Terrence Knighton. Because you talk about two guys – in a lot of ways, we're the exact polar opposite of each other, right? Grew up in different backgrounds and different environments, have different belief systems. You know, one guy has faith, another guy, not so much. And to see those interactions and hear laughter and everything and just like joking around, like that's that's what makes a locker room a locker room. And, and then we had a coach in Joe Collin that, you know, facilitated that. Now, if you're a rookie for Joe Cullen, well, forget you. I mean, hey, you, you don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you have to earn your stripes. But if you're a veteran, yeah, those are those are some good memories for sure. Well, let's hear from Doug Peterson. He caught up, uh, or Logan McDonald uh, from Action News Jacks caught up with him the other morning at this uh, event and just a little off football, right? And talking more about the event and, and being a dad. Yeah, this is a great organization, all pro dads. So- you know, uh, we need we need more dads to really step up and be, be present in the families, be present in the home. And, and uh, this organization right here helps build those strong relationships with families and with their children. And uh, like I said, we need we need more of that in our communities, and we meet, need more of the dads to really step up. And and it's just a great influence to. That was actually the music was going along. I'm not nice gonna lie, I kind of pulled the plug. Yeah, on it. no, the, the music, music was going. Sounded on. pretty good, man. Yeah, we're not sure. So sometimes we can, sometimes that music gets attached, uh, uh, Kim, to to the soundbite, but it actually ended in a pretty good spot. I liked it. I liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, that was uh, Doug Peterson and uh, nice crescendo at yes. the end. Yep. Um, you, you know, I do think about it in this way. How much do you think Doug? Again, Doug had his own kid on the roster last year, which is also an interesting dynamic, but. How much do you think Doug has to be fatherly figure in a way to Trevor at 24 years old? He could be his son, right? <laughs> I really could. Like, yeah, yeah. Easily. yeah a lot, all yeah. these guys could be his son. Yeah, yeah. I think that's an interesting dynamic. When do you get fatherly? When do you get friendly? When do you get coaching? So you have to be fatherly when the locker room dictates that you have to be. And we spoke on this, and this is kind of old news now, but let's go and dive back into it because it's a good topic to bring it back up. I think last year, Doug Peterson had to play more of the fatherly role as opposed to the X's and O's, uh, X's and O's coach's role. Mm. And I've been a very big proponent on this. I don't think they have the leadership in the locker room um, on you know both sides of the ball to say, hey, dad, we'll take it from here. Go and give us the keys. We got this. Go start calling plays. I don't think the Jaguars were there. Now you you go out, bring in a lot of former captains, a lot of older veterans, guys from winning organizations, and now I think you feel like, you know what? We have some new guys in, the, in this stable, in this locker room. Confident. Here, take the keys. Figure it out amongst yourselves. I got to call some plays. I think we're to that point now. So... I think every coach's head coach's role is different. I think some coaches come in to a new job and they got to be a fatherly figure. There has to be some babysitting because the culture's not put in place yet. I feel like some other coaches come in right away and it's like, oh, yeah, this is where it needs to be. Let's go ahead and I'll turn the keys over. Like, for instance, and I tell this story how many times, I went from Jacksonville, who won two games, to Kansas City, who won two games, right? 
That was 2013. That was, yeah, 2013, my year. World of difference. Night and day. Why? Because Kansas City had leaders. Kansas City had Eric Berry. They had Justin Houston. They had Jamal Charles. They had Alex Smith. Uh, they just brought in Travis Kelsey. Not a leader yet, but you know, <laughs> but they had a lot of leaders um, let's make on that, that team. Yeah, let's make it very clear right now. <laughs> Andy Reid comes in, and it wasn't a, we had to tear this down. Oh, you, yeah. you know, like rally the troops. Let's go on a team retreat, a team bonding retreat, and try to turn this thing around. Andy Reid essentially came in and said it and forget. He's like, we got leaders here. We had great players here. Let me go and do my thing now. Let's get some offense here. Let me start cooking a little bit, and we'll be all right. And, and that was, like, the biggest shock for me is when I got to Kansas City, it wasn't about, like, tearing it down from the studs and building it back up because they knew – well, I, I didn't know, but Andy Reid knew we got all the players that we need right here. We have all the leaders that you could ever imagine. Now it's the X's and O's. I think in Jacksonville for a while, and we've seen year in, year out, there's been, you know, some problems – Guys have had to come in. Urban Myers had to come in. Doug Peterson's had to come in and say, man, I'm not sure if we have that culture. I'm not sure if we have the guys in the locker room yet to just throw the keys over. So I think they got there this year, this offseason. That might be the biggest feat of this offseason, whether or not you get a wide receiver or not, is the fact that I think Doug Peterson can finally turn the keys over and say, all right, this locker room can run itself. Yeah, and he's probably going to mesh that a little bit right now. Offseason conditioning starts, and you get those new guys in that mm-hmm. were brought in with the captains and the leadership. Now they have to, they can't come out and say, they got to blend in for now. And then somewhere along the way, they help take over leadership responsibilities but I think you bring up a great point this would be a fascinating look at it sometime you take that dynamic of 2013 what you said with Andy Reid or you take the 2000 and whatever it would have been like 16 or 15 for Doug Peterson going to Philly and you take what he had to walk into in Philly in Jacksonville from Urban Meyer and there was a lot of parenting going on okay Mm -hmm. I mean because he didn't and to his credit he did not denounce everything that Urban did publicly but it was also like in facial recognition and, <laughs> and some words, yeah. or we were saying it for him. Like everybody knew. Everybody knew what had to be done. And so um, I think there was a lot of fatherly stuff that had to be done when you got into that building. And by the way, not just for Trevor Lawrence, not just for the offense, defense, for the whole building. Like that whole building. Like, I mean, ticket sellers and everybody, it felt like they needed a guy like Doug to help kind of make some stuff feel good. And, yeah. and get a little give, give the whole building a hug in a sense. You know, really. <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding, man. Give the whole building a blanket and some hot cocoa. I think that dynamic. Listen, people don't want to admit that dynamic. I think because what it does is it showcases you're basically saying, hey, it's a knock on everybody else working. I'm not. I think there are a lot of great people that work at the Jags. I think there are people that also lost control um, working for the Jags because of Urban Meyer's control. And and sometimes you just can't help it. Like you, I don't know if you can do anything about it. And um, I think Doug kind of put the people back in control that were in control and also took control of the things that he needed to take control of. And um, I think that dynamic will be one that will be talked about at some point. Hopefully the Jags win big enough this year, next year, whatever, with Doug at the helm so you can really celebrate really what he had to change yeah, from 21 a, to 22. Yeah, exactly. You know, and listen, I understand it takes a lot to make up a great coach. Um and every coach is going to be different. But I think the true mark of any great coach is if that coach steps away from the locker room, it would monitor itself. It would run itself, right? Where you don't need to give the rah-rah speeches. You know, you don't need to be in the locker room 24-7 because you have guys that will hold your message accountable. I think Bill Belichick's a classic example of this. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure Bill Belichick, there's been times where he's chewed out his own players but I think eventually when you had Brady and you even had Gronk and uh, Amendola, Adam and guys like that, who knows, hey, this is Bill Belichick. There, there's a way we do things here. That's, that's what you want the Jaguars to get to, is that when these rookies are coming in, you have veterans that lock them, they can say, all right, welcome to Jacksonville. Here's how we do things. Not there yet. That's what you have to aspire to be. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. I, I remember this from the Gus days. Like Gus knew it. He Gus, I don't think they ever saw it and could get it. I don't know if they were too young or whatever, but he's like, we need the the ownership in the locker room. They had it in Seattle, Mm -hmm. right, at the state of that team and where it was at. I think the Jags were so young at times, they could never get that ownership in the locker room. And then you take 2017, 18. Did you want that locker room taking ownership, some of the guys in there? Right, if you go back to that. Now have you found a place where you've got – that's why the Josh Allen, Trevor Lawrence staples on both sides of the ball are huge. You don't mind those guys being leaders for the next five years. They're going to set the standard. 
Like that's the place the organization is hopefully in better than ever before because the dynamic of the locker room, I think, is in a better position. You still got to win, though. You got to set the standard. You got to meet the standard. You got to exceed the standard. Yeah. Like you, a lot of things still have to take place, but at least they potentially you can see a map where they have a foundation in place for that from the head coach on on down, which really it just hasn't been the case. Like if you really were to talk to a true psychologist about this stuff, <laughs> I, I don't think it's been – the dynamic just hasn't been there for the making. They haven't been in a position to – to do what they are maybe in a position to do right now. I think you got to give uh, the organization some credit uh, for that. My fatherly advice uh, is uh, go to Donato's Pizza, by the way. Used to go to Donato's up in Columbus, Ohio. My wife's from there. And uh, I was like, whoa, this is really good pizza. you got to find the best pizza in your town, in your place. Well, Donato's is ours in the Martineau household. They have two locations, Jack's Beach and Mandarin. We love it. From Columbus, Ohio, all the way down to Jacksonville, Florida. Here's the order, by the way. Pepperoni, lots of them. I love the pepperoni pizza uh, at Donato's. It's filled with the peppy. We like the works, too. A little bit of everything on that pizza. Hawaiian-style pizza as well. And right now, your family can try it like mine does. Brent 20 is the code when you call for Donato's Pizza and you save 20% off your order. Brent 20, simple as that. Every viewer and listener is important to us. Every piece is important at Donato's Pizza. Two locations, Jack's Beach and Mandarin. Go check out Donato's Pizza, where every piece is important. Every fight was important. UFC 300. What do you think? Overall thoughts on uh, the big one? Chef's kiss. Max Fantastic. Holloway stole the show. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to I get recency bias and everything. I'm going to go out here and say a top three greatest buzzer beater of all time. Yeah, because it was with in like a second sport. to go, right? That's, that's a cool Justin way to look at Gagey, it. Justin Gagey, Max Holloway. And, and keep in mind, I mean, I'm, I'm sure everyone now has seen the, the highlights on Twitter and Instagram and wherever. Max Holloway had that fight won. There is no way that if it goes to the judges that Max Holloway doesn't win. It would have been fight of the night regardless uh, because Max Holloway got dropped as well. But the fact that for the second time now, this dude chooses to stand in the middle of the octagon, point down on the ground and say, let's do this, um, says all you need to know. And by the way, it was for the BMF belt as well. I mean, if, if you, could, you, couldn't, you couldn't draw it up any better. And Justin Gagey, friend of the show, Justin mm-hmm. Gagey, specializes in violence himself, only knows one thing and stepping forward. Wasn't going to turn Max Holloway down. And uh, literally have a Pier 6 brawl, a brouhaha, whatever you want to call it, for 10 seconds before Justin Gagey gets knocked out. Hard, by the way. Wasn't a wasn't a, an easy knockout, like a vicious, violent, head-hitting-the-mat kind of knockout. Man, like that that is going to be the best moment of the year for the UFC. Yeah, it probably will be. I mean, yeah. it's hard to beat. And like you said, that's all like how you put it, too. It was a buzzer beater. It was a true buzzer beater yeah. where he didn't need to do it. Uh, what about the rest of the card? I watched some of the prelims. I thought it was, some of the fights were really good. Yeah. Uh, what about the in, – in the what caught your attention outside of that? Because everybody's talking about So, that. I mean, that was obviously the big one. Yuri Prohova, though, against Rakic. Um, that was a fight on the prelims. I watched that, that one, man. That, that was that good. That should have been on, on the main card. Uh, and listen, the, 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 the whole storyline with this fight was Rakic was calling, saying that uh, Prohova – or, yeah, but wasn't a, a real samurai, right? Because – to be fair, some of his training methods are a little unorthodox, mm-hmm. right? He he's based his entire life around the art of war and other s- manuals that you know have been written by great swordsmen. So like he's like Yuri has dedicated his entire life to this philosophy, and even so much though that it's on all over Twitter now. It's crazy. The night before the fight, around eight or nine o'clock, you know Vegas time. A fan was going to a casino to play, I guess, blackjack or something, and he records Yuri Pahova standing by himself outside of the arena, just like looking up at the bright lights of the arena, not moving or anything. And the fan was like, I want to go get his autograph, but I'm like super scared. And like, that was it. <laughs> fan comes back out hour, hour 30 minutes later. Hope he won. And Yuri is still standing out there staring at like the, you know, like the, what do you call it? The, Marquee, like the, yeah, like the oh, big yeah, yeah, event yeah. marquee. Yeah, yeah. Just stare at the marquee by himself. And the guy's like, this is really weird. But eventually, I guess he, he had the, you know, cojones to go up and talk to Yuri and he got a picture with him. Wow. But, uh, and Yuri was smiling and everything. But it's just, it goes to show you sometimes, man, like if you will it, 
it can happen because Yuri was taking shot after shot, didn't get affected by any kind of punches whatsoever. And take make no mistake by Rakic, man. Like the guy's the real deal striker. Very polished, very seasoned. And Yuri just walked right through it and got himself probably another tight opportunity because yeah, of it. That was a good fight. I watched that one. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then uh, the nightcap. Yeah, the, the, the main event, obviously, Jamal Hill, uh, Alexander Piera. And Piera, man, um, I've seen next to him before, is a big dude. Yeah. And everyone talks about his left hook. They call it the touch of God because, like, when he touches you, doesn't have to be hard. Don't have to put your whole body into it. But when he touches that chin or even close to your head, you go to sleep. Yeah, I was and, asking you about that. It didn't yeah. look in slow mo like he really even got him. He kind of grazed his nose, but I mean, obviously, he got him. <laughs> yeah, no, he got him for sure. And um, yeah, so I mean, top to bottom, a great night of fights, and obviously headlined by Max Holloway. And it's crazy now. I mean, Max Holloway, that moment will forever live in time. But now Max Holloway on his resume has two moments in the UFC that will ever be like immortalized. And the other one was when he fought Kelvin Cater. Uh, to go back set the story up real quick, Kelvin Cater is known as a boxer, and he said that he was the best boxer in the UFC. Max Holloway took offense to this. They fight. Holloway breaks the record for most punches landed, and also I think I think I think it's most significant strikes landed, but also um, Cater said it for something else as well, not in a good way. But nevertheless, there is at one point in the fight where Holloway has his hands down and is talking back to Cater, saying. I'm the best boxer. And then he looks away. The most disrespectful thing you can do during a fight is you turn your head to the announcers and say, this guy thinks he's the best boxer. I'm the best boxer. And Cater is still trying to punch him. And Holloway is ducking the punches, not even looking at him. Talking to Daniel Cormier. That's another moment for Max Holloway that will ever like, live in time in the UFC. And by the way, the, the most down-to-earth dude you're ever going to meet. Really? You know? So yeah. it's, just, it's just why. I mean, that's just, I guess, like the the, the whole um, – He's Hawaiian, so like the, the Hawaiian fighters, man, they've always been a little like wild and crazy in terms of like their mindset, but out of the cage, completely humble and just laid back. Pretty interesting. Uh, so a good card lived up to the billing, um, uh, according to most. And yeah. now uh, countdown is on for uh, your fight in Vegas at the Apex coming up on April 27th. Uh, Austin will be out in Vegas starting next week, which will be draft week, and he'll join us too. And they announced the lineup. I'll be on the main card. So there main you go. card. Yeah. So what time would that? Uh, what time are you thinking? Eight o'clock ish, <sighs> nine o'clock ish. So, so here, you're talking about? Well, yeah. yeah. Here would be probably more like. No, here it should. Pr- I would say eight thirty nine. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, off the yeah, yeah. right around there. Yeah. So it's going to be obviously the time. Oh, look at look, look, look at the Kim corner. Kim's doing well. Kim's doing her thing. Yeah. Uh, all right, Kim, let's get to a break. Uh, nothing like a top of the noon break, but uh, let's do it anyway. When we come back, Shock Your Mock presented by Everbank. It is coming up next. Oh, what are we going to find in the Shock Your Mock week two? Remember, the winners of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday head to the quarterfinals, which will be fan vote starting next Monday during draft week. We'll have quarter semis and finals. More to come. Shock Your Mock up next on the Brenton Austin Show on the Action Sports Shacks 24 Network on actionnewsjacks.com and the Action News Jacks app. I like to say everybody has a story, and sometimes we are a part of other people's stories. That's the case here at Nimnik Buick GMC. My family and the Nimnik family, we've purchased six different vehicles from Nimnik Buick GMC. Maybe you're in the market for a truck. Well, let me tell you about the GMC Sierra. I absolutely love mine. I've had a couple of these. This one's a 2020, but right now on 2024 GMC Sierras here at Nimnik Buick GMC, there's special financing. A year ago, we purchased a GMC Terrain for the kids. Financing rates as low as 0.9% for eligible buyers on terrains and no payments for 90 days. Looking for used instead of new? Buy a used car with the Car Bravo program. Nimnik Buick GMC certifies all makes and models. Let the number one Buick GMC dealer in Jacksonville take care of you and your family. Come on out and see the showroom. Meet the fantastic people. Or shop online at NimnikBuickGMC.com. Nimnik, your friends in the car business since 1941. GMC, we are professional grade. What started out as better people, better projects, just keeps getting, well, better. That's Better Exterior Solutions, ready to help you create a better outdoor experience. Check this out. Motorized pergolas are the latest in technology to transform your outdoor space. Beautiful day? Let the sun shine through. Summer rainstorm? 
these pergola systems close automatically to keep the weather out from residential to commercial uses. Better Exterior Solutions has products customized to meet virtually any existing architectural structure. With retractable awnings, screens, and hurricane shutters too, if you want unparalleled quality and expertise, you need Better Exterior Solutions. Get a free estimate by visiting betterexteriors.com or calling 904-902-4999. Better Exterior Solutions, experience better. It's a fishing tournament everyone wants to get in, and it's time for you to register. More than 650 boats entered last summer in the Daly's Old School Kingfish Shootout presented by Yellowfin. Mark the calendar now, June 8th. This is fun for the entire family, and everyone has a chance to win big. Limited boundaries, no bait buying, no checkout. Cash prizes for the top 25 places, cash prizes for the top 10 lady anglers, and prizes for the top 15 junior anglers. The grand prize, this Yellowfin Bay boat with a 200 horsepower Yamaha and Ameritrail trailer. The value, over $100,000. It's the Daily's Old School Kingfish Shootout. Early entry until the end of May is open and $250. If you don't catch the big one, don't worry. Just catch any size kingfish and have a chance to win $10,000 with the Nimnik Lucky Ticket. OldSchoolKingfish.com. Register early until May 31st at OldSchoolKingfish.com. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Streaming right now on Action News Jax. Let's get your morning started. It's local. Take a look at this surprising video. It's breaking. It's weather 24-7. I gotta keep you guys safe. It's original. More trucks, more food. It's entertaining. Duval! Now it's new and free. Cause no one can do it like we do it, like we do it, like we do it. Everywhere, anytime. Stream Action News Jax wherever you watch. Discover how good your water can be with a new Kinetico softener and drinking water system. Kinetico's twin tank non-electric softeners are the most efficient softeners available, and their drinking water systems remove up to 99% of contaminants. We know that at our home. You can find out as well. Right now, you can save $1,000 or more when you bundle the Kinetico Premier softener with a Kinetico K5 drinking water system. The experts at CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing will test your water for free and determine your water score. Don't know your water score? Well, CGC will find out and recommend the appropriate Kinetico water treatment solutions to improve it. The higher your water score, the better your water. Call 904-552-1242 or visit cgcwater.com. That's 904-552-1242, cgcwater.com. Financing options are available with approved credit. CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I'm a proud customer of CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing, an authorized independent Kinetico dealer. Florida license number CFC 1- one four three two five seven nine. Welcome back to the Brett and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks twenty four seven network. Good, good. All there right. we go. There, there we go. go. Hey. Shock your mock. Week number two here, 2024. And uh, we're doing it different this year. Again, Austin makes the rules. So uh, the rules are we're pitting one mock against another mock. Yes. And uh, we'll have quarterfinals, semifinals, finals next week. It'll be a fan vote. So we hope you participate. We got four winners from last week already entered into that uh, final bracket. Yes. And uh, maybe we'll have some prizes and, and stuff like that uh, to, to hand out for the winners. So, Brent, real quick, this kind of set the story of where we're at now as a shock your mock conglomerate, if you will, because it is a team effort. <laughs> you were out a couple days last week. When the cat is away, the mice will play and play we did as I had to come up with some new songs with yes. you being gone. And, Brent, we, we had a banging on our hands on Thursday. I okay? heard. Um, so, so all the all the rage in the chats, and 
what I did was I set it to a kid's song. That was one of the options I could do with my AI, you know, my five uh, buck a month AI <laughs> app that I have. Um, set it to a kid's song, and, and the rest is history. And I'll be honest, I, I didn't know what to do after that, Brent, right? Because we kind of established a, 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 a new sense of just greatness. You know, like when Led Zeppelin was making Led Zeppelin 1 or 2, I'm sure once that was pressed, they thought, wow, the, the world's going to change. And that's how we thought when that song came out. And not only did I have to think about that, I also had to break down 12 different players then as well for Shock Your Mock. So a lot on your plate. Here's what we did, Brent. Sometimes in the business, they have to call it a remix. Okay? <laughs> and, and what I have did here is I've taken my ingenuity, my expertise, and I've now combined it with AI. So now you got Austin and AI working hand in hand wow. as a cohesive unit. And we've come up with something that we think you're going to like. I have uh, taken Casey's name out of the old song. And now you, Brent Martineau, are in the fabled, the storied Shock Your Mock song from Thursday. And you won't even notice the transition in terms of when I added you in because it's done that well. Hey, Rick Rubin, he's a producer, by the way. Calls are open. If you're interested in collaborating with me, because I'm collaborating with AI right now, and I'm like what I'm doing. Hey, Me Metro Boomin, I know you're busy right now with the whole Drake and you know beef going on. Drake kind of put you underneath the dirt a little bit with that diss track. But Metro Boomin, if you want to get back in the producing game, go and give me a call as well. You ready, Brent? I am ready. I back into the mix. Here. Without much further ado, here's the Shock Your Mock remix featuring Brent Martino. <laughs> Austin and Brent. Plan so bright, talking about the draft until the night. Duval's their home, where whispers flock. Together they're ready to shock your mock. Jaguars roar, ready to pick, hoping their choice will do the trick. In the sunshine, bright and clear, trust in the team. Feel the cheer Goals are set Fans dream big Hoping for a dance A winning jig Duval's bright Joy on the track Austin and Brent We got their back Don't worry Brent Those a, goosebumps are going to go away You put a lot of work in don't worry, Brent. Those goosebumps were good. Yeah, the seamless transition. You notice those? You couldn't even I tell. Couldn't even tell. Couldn't even tell, could you? Uh, I like the bass in the Brent, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have a little bass in your chest. I mean, you know what hey, I'm saying? Jack Johnson, Curious George. <laughs> get out of the way. Johnson, Curious George. I love it. <laughs> I mean, get out of the way. Yeah. Uh, the kids are, you know, young adults now, but we used to listen to Jack Johnson, Curious George. I wish we had that track yeah, back in the song. day. Yeah. Upside down, man. It's a great song. Better together. All right. Let's better together is a great one, too. Let's go to the Kim Corner. Kim Corner, do we have the first mock raider roll? Here. Look at that. Oh, Ask what do we got here? Ask and you shall receive. All right. How am I on this thing? Oh, what's this, Brent? So, obviously, I mean, first of all, there's a lot of imitators out there. But when you have imitators, Brent, you got to check the watermark, right? And this has the Delphonic watermark <laughs> written all over it. If you ever want to know what's Delphonic or not, look for that puppet Brent Martineau getting held by Trent Bulky, and you can tell if it's a true Delphonic or not. And this is a true, true. Delphonic. <laughs> true Delphonic. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's some imitators out there, man. Hooked on Delphonic. Hooked on Delphonic, <laughs> man. So we have Delphonic's um, mock draft here that he sent in featuring the watermark, so you know it's the real deal. And let's get started. So, Brent, we have a new name here. First time to shock your mock. We're going to Toledo. Holy Toledo, Brent. Holy Toledo. Quinion Mitchell. I'm sorry. Yeah, Quinion Mitchell. Um, six feet, 195, 433. Ran a, uh, I'm sorry. Jumped a 38-inch vertical. Brent, your, immediately, your immediate thoughts from Quinion Mitchell. Now, Mitchell's a guy that a lot of, when the cycle started, a lot of people like this guy better than anybody else. And now I feel like others like Terry and Arnold and, and other corners have kind of jumped it. Um, and we're seeing a bunch of different names, which again, I don't mind the lack of groupthink. But when you don't have groupthink, what it says to me is that there's really not a standout player. This could be the best one in the, in the draft. Yeah. But 
Delphonic. Why are we going corner? <sighs> it's a little aggressive. Now, Brent, keep in mind, though, if you take his athleticism score, couple that with his production score, he is the highest rated cornerback in this draft. And that's not me saying that. That's science. That's next gen. <laughs> that's next gen. So science speaks for this, okay? So the highest rated quarterback in terms of athleticism and production due to next gen stats. NFL comparison, Brent? Steven Nelson. <clears throat> Sauce Gardner, Richard Sherman. Uh, Steven Nelson. Reggie Nelson? Do you know who Steven Nelson is? Because I don't. And I, I didn't even Google it. I, I felt like I was dumb. Like, I don't want to like embarrass myself. I figured you know who Stephen Steve Nelson. Steve Nelson once played, I think, for the New England Patriots, but he was a linebacker. I want to say wore number fifty-seven when I was a kid. I think. Okay. Um. <laughs> All right. Well, Stephen Nelson. There you go. Take that for how you want. Uh, scouts are saying Mitchell possesses a gumbo of traits with size, <laughs> strength, speed. Filling up the pot. Lunchtime didn't hungry. Even, didn't even like exaggerate. That's, that was the exact quote. I'll say it one more time for the people that didn't hear me. He's got a gumbo of traits with size, strength, and speed. Filling up the pot. That's like the works at Donato's. By the way, <laughs> pizza Brent 20 is Are we code. talking about uh, players? Are we just it's like, like a Zatarans commercial? It's lunchtime. You know what I'm saying? It is lunchtime. Um, <laughs> another scout said he's built like a running back, tackles like a safety, and has the, bil- the ball skills of a cornerback. Take it how you want, man. I feel like running backs are built all different these days, but take that for how you want. Yeah, listen, I think he has a chance to be a good player. Here's the thing. It's Quinion Mitchell yeah. better than Ronald Darby Yeah, for what they need. That's really what you're asking, right? Correct. I, I don't think Tyson Campbell's going to take a seat. I don't think. Yes. So that's, that's what you ask when you pick number 17. That, that's my question to anybody that drafts corner, including you, Delphonic. I do like uh, his second-round pick, though. Now, would you be happy if the if he became the next Stephen Nelson? <laughs> no. <laughs> Steve, Have we figured I mean, out who Stephen Nelson Unless there's is? more than one Stephen Nelson. Stephen Nelson, cornerback out of Oregon State, 2015, third-round pick. Played for the Chiefs, Steelers, Eagles, and Texans. He's active. He played for the Texans last year. One sack, uh, 13 interceptions. He's got 13 picks? Uh, yeah. Should we know who this guy is more than? I guess. Is he an all-pro? Like, I don't think he has any like pro bowl or all-pro things, but Steven Nelson, I don't I mean, check him out, He basically just gave us a journeyman at number 17. Correct. That's your comp. Exactly. <laughs> so pick number 48. We're going wide receiver. You're taking care of Trevor a little bit. Uh, we're taking Xavier Leggett. Yeah. We probably don't have the audio from him, but, man, it's it's gold. A, a combination of Bubba Gump and Forrest Gump, as I like to say. <laughs> I'll t- I tell you Go what, ahead. man. One thing, I saw a video of him over the weekend. He gets you excited now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, ran a 4.39, 10.6 broad, 40-inch vertical. He has all the intangibles, all the explosiveness. Um, scouts have said, though, that he uses, he uses his route running simply as a means of getting to the rendezvous point rather than a chance to con coverage out of position. Take that for how you want. I just think this is a guy who you throw it up, he's going to go get it, Brent. Yeah. And you know what? I think the Jaguars are looking for a guy like that. And he can run away. See, that's he can the thing. Like, yeah. he, can, he can run away from people, too, which is cool. Uh, rendezvous is always a great uh, draft term, too. Correct. Um, next one, we got Dwayne Carter, 6'2", 302 pounds, 33-inch arms. Because, you know, defensive tackle, got to put that in for Trent Balky. That guy likes it on that watermark. Uh, he kind of likes it on the watermark. Could be a Trent Bulky blue light special coming from a blue devil, if you will. Brett, your thoughts? I don't know much about him, but uh, I'll take defensive tackle in the third round. I think you check the box of corner and receiver. Uh, not in the order I would like, but defensive tackle is is not bad as long as we're somehow getting to an edge, which I think we do. We are getting to the edge, and keep in mind, this guy, it's kind of the opposite of what you usually see Defensive tackle is going in the third or fourth round where it's like they're good at stopping the run, but a liability in the pass game. This is kind of the difference where he's a really good pass rusher, but can be vulnerable right now in the run game. So he might have to come to Jack's Beach and put some sand in his pants. But keep in mind, I think what happened with Dwayne Carter, because Casey broke this down last week, we both agree that we think Dwayne Carter may have took some of the sand out of his pants. <laughs> And put some smarties in his pants because he's a smarty pants. Guy's an intelligent individual. Okay, very good. So, so I guess you can't have it both ways, right? Sand either smarty, either pants. you got sand in your pants or you got smarties in your pants, but you can't have it both. So maybe take out some of the smarts now. You're smart enough. You went to Duke. 
Kyrie Irving went to Duke and thought the world was flat, but it is what it is. <laughs> Did I lie? But take some of the smarties out your pants, put some sand in your pants, Brett, and now we might have a, a bona fide defensive tackle who can do it all. Very good. Stuart Weber, by the way, found out the world is not flat. He circled all around the globe. Uh, <laughs> I just talked to Stuart Weber then. Uh, pick number 114 coming out of Houston Christian. Yep, that's a university. Uh, Jalex. Jalex? Jalex Hunt. Who's that Pokemon? It's Jalex Hunt. Sounds like a Pokemon. <laughs> Doesn't? I'm not following you. Okay, okay. well, Jalex, Brent, I mean, it's a, it's a unique name. Yes, it is. And I think you would find a Jalex in a Pokemon, in a Pokedex. All right. I need someone younger with me sometimes. Uh, do, you, do you know what Pokemon is? I do know what Pokemon is. Got to catch them all? Are people still playing that game? Yeah, man. They yeah. do? Yeah. It's, Remember it's, like it's, when people were walking into like cars and stuff trying to find? <laughs> no, they're not, they're not doing the app game, but I'm just saying the uh, cards and everything. Yeah, they're, no, they're, I know that. Okay. Well, yeah. okay. Yeah. The cards pretty, are a big deal. Cards are a big deal. But they're not yes. playing the game anymore. I mean, I'm sure some people are, but yeah, you don't see them like in droves like zombies. Like oh yeah. They're, I remember parks were getting so upset because you had like a hundred people yeah. out there at the same time like, killing I, you, all the guys. Like Weber would go to UNF and do yep. it. Yep. Um, but getting back on track here. Yeah. I think Jalik sounds like a, a Pokemon, but your thoughts, Brent? Um, I don't really know him, right? I mean, to be honest. Uh, Houston Christian? Yes. Well, first he went to Cornell and then Houston Christian. Maybe Delphonic wants to put a Gene Smith watermark <laughs> up. <laughs> Got him. 6'4", 252, 34 and 3-8 inch arms. That's a, that's a Trent Bulky Blue Light special if I ever heard that. Um, only 19 reps in the bench, which I really won't say the bench press matters, but usually when you're that big, we, we got to see you at least get 20. Here's the thing about this guy, Brent. He's a former safety. He has a small flame frame, doesn't have an anchor point, and will be a developmental pick. Okay, at 114, I don't know if I need a developmental pick when you kind of have one of those already here with Yasir Abdullah. Because, like, you did mention Abdullah earlier in the show. Yes. And it, remember, they have that guy still. Does Are they going to develop him? Are they going to get something out of him? We don't know. We He was hardly active this year mm-hmm. for the Jags. But they that was basically a fourth-round pick project pick last year if i remember correctly Correct. I mean, it was top of the fifth round but it was in that mix the middle rounds why do that again that, that's why i don't like that doing that again at edge i mean he has size he has athleticism he has the numbers and i say numbers in terms of he has the numbers athletically now it's can you produce this guy and maximize his talent and make him a bona fide pass rusher it's a possibility yeah, we'll see. I like this next pick. Pick 116. We're going to Cam Hart. You should, Brent. This guy's, I mean, what I was reading, the real deal. Yeah, we've had him before. I like yeah. this guy. 6'3", 202. Now, you said it might be too, too tall for for a corner? Six, no, we had for one that was 6'4". Okay. 6'3", six six is six right in that wheelhouse. Okay. But it's, okay. It's, hey, by the way, 6'3", is pretty tall, too, for a corner, though. It it's, is. It's on the verge. So, Cam Hart, 6'3", 202, 33-inch arms, ran a 4'5", 39.5-inch vertical. Ridiculous. And 10-10 on the broad jump, double ridiculous. Um, He has all the athletic traits in the world. The one knock on this guy is his production. It's not there. Um, Apparently, he took a 23andMe test because, and I quote, according to scouts, he does not have the playmaking gene. 23andMe test? Well, I'm kidding. That was the joke. Do you know 23 and Me? Do you know what that is? The jeans, Brent. Yeah. What's up, man? Did, did I say something I shouldn't have said? Did I offend somebody? You're, you're, I don't know. What do you mean 23 and Me? You know what that is? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, Scout said that he doesn't have the playmaking gene. That was the joke of the 23 and Me test. I can say that. You just did. I'll say it again. Is that a, Kim Corner, is that offensive? Yeah, she's fine with it. We're good, Brent. It's her first day on the job and she's down. All right, what do you got? His his playmaking production. When you say that, I the the guy that I go back to that had a knock for not making plays on the ball or interceptions was actually Jalen Ramsey at FSU. Mm. He came up with like I think he had one pick in his collegiate career. Yeah. Now again, I'm not sitting here Cam Hart, but, but what <laughs> I'll tell Ramsey. what I'll tell you though is is that as big a concern? Should that be concerning? Yes. Um, now it's nice when you have the ball hawking guys like you have an Andre Cisco. He's done a good job being able to get the ball. Did it in. College. Looks like he's doing it in the NFL a bit. You like that. Yep. I like the trend. But we'll also say, hey, Trayvon Walker had nine and a half career sacks at Georgia. He had 10 last year alone. 
So don't get carried away with that part. I like Cam Hart a lot in this middle round. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And you don't like 23 and me. <laughs> it's fine now. Okay, I'm, I hope so. Um, next pick, oh, Brent, this is a fan. I, I'm convinced Delphonic put this guy in here just so he could see what I was going to say about him again. Yeah. Zach Zinter, man. So to be, I mean, in every single Tom Gamble draft. special. Tom Gamble special. Uh, so this guy, six feet, 309. I'm sorry, six foot. He's taller than six feet. He's got to be taller than six feet. Yeah, this guy's like six four, uh, 309, 33 inch arms, nine and three eighths inch hands. If you really care about that, I feel like nine and three eighths inch hands isn't that big. But I know, once again, I know for that, I don't know if you usually the defensive guys have like ten plus hands. Yeah. But I don't this know be about Zach the offense. I've never really thought or? about hands on the offensive Can line. Can he pick it? Okay, but or is he heavy handed? He is okay. He plays an attitude. If that makes you feel any better, um, NFL comparison: Graham Glasgow, who we thought was going to come here, but didn't come here. Um, was it even on the table, or no. was that the other guy from Detroit? Glass now, Glasgow. You we it. will never know. Um, one scout said we've had this fun fun before. Uh, he has adequate length with some thick hips, and since it is Zach Zinter, you know how I feel about Zach Zinter. Sounds like a guy from a Disney movie. So here we go again for like the tenth time. Let it go. Zach Zinter is an All-American high school quarterback with big dreams of going D1. Well, that was until an accident happened at the lumber yard, and now Zach is going to have to knock on wood and hope he doesn't get ruined in his career. It's Zach Zinter's big splinter coming this fall <laughs> on the Disney Channel. <laughs> keep sending him in, and I'll Zach keep doing Zinter's him. Big splinter. Zach Zinter's big splinter. <laughs> <laughs> Only on Disney. Uh, very good. Yep. Um, next pick we have. Um, I wish. I wish we would. I mean, I wish that like somebody would take this guy a little like higher so we can talk about him more. Uh, Frank Kroom. Have you seen a picture of Frank Kroom? No. If you could visualize what Frank Kroom would look like, you're probably right. Okay. Really? This guy is a combination of like Brock Lesnar and. A different version of Brock Lesnar. This is like Brock. <laughs> this is like Brock Lesnar from the like the multiverse. Okay, uh, he's the pride of Wyoming. Um, three hundred thirteen pounds, thirty three and seven eighths inch arms, ten and a half inch hands. Big guy. Brent, here's the real story. Care to guess how tall this guy is? Um, six seven. You would think Frank Kroom. Nope. Want to try again? Six nine. Six eight. Six eight three thirteen. All right. Big dude. Very it's like Andrew Norwell. Very, very, very <laughs> big like. dude. Um listen, what it comes down to is this guy was started for all four seasons. Smaller school, you could say, in Wyoming. Um strong, has all the intangibles, but obviously lacks polish and quickness. Yeah. Um looking over his numbers real quick, ran a four nine four, which isn't that bad for offensive linemen. Uh, 31 inch vertical, 9 6 broad jump. This is a guy that you can bring in, hopefully develop him, and then he turns in to be an absolute stud for you down the line. I mean, I picked 212. Yeah. Hey, just to say that you, you drafted a 6 8 tackle, let's do it. And Wyoming's been um, a decent spot for the Jags. Yeah. Uh, you know, or at least a spot they keep going to. Chad Muma, um, um, and obviously. Uh, Chris Brzezinski? Yeah, well, Brzezinski. But Brzezinski played in the league for a while now. I mean, sure. And. Now, he was a fourth rounder. Yeah. Moon was a third round. This guy, obviously, you're getting later in the draft. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, Andrew Winger, too. Okay. And then uh, ending out the draft with Will Ricard. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I didn't do any research on that guy. He, he was a good kicker for he's a, a kicker. He's oh, a okay. Kicker. He's good. Right. I don't know. Like, listen, uh, at this pick. <laughs> he, he got drafted. He's good. But the last, the last pick, I mean, I don't mind spending the kicker there. Yeah. Because Jags need to find one. Yeah. Like, if they need to find a guy. So... Um, I wouldn't hate it if they did that. All right, let's do this. Take a break. Shock your mock. What is it again? Zach Zinter in the name of the Disney show coming out? Oh, we're talking about uh, Zach Zinter's Big Splinter. <laughs> Zach Zinter's Big Splinter. Yeah, man. Uh, when we come back, uh, Delphonic with the watermark. How does he do against our, well, other mock draft? There's plenty of reasons why I want Delphonic out. <laughs> so Taking a corner 17 might uh <laughs> Maybe he said, that process he actually a little tweeted bit. in and said he tried to make his case. I tried to change up, tr uh, trade up for a Dunze, but it wouldn't be accepted. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, wow. In, in true Trent Bulky fashion. Uh, I think he this, was playing the role. This AI is getting smarter and smarter, isn't it? <laughs> we'll be back. Brenton Austin show. Uh, Shock Your Mock presented by Everbank continues. It's a new logo, new branding. 
But with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who's coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. Do you have ugly concrete around your home or business? Are you tired of concrete that is cracked, stained, or just plain ugly? Spartan Coatings range of products provides a surface that is non-porous, easy to clean, antibacterial, and slip resistant, all with superior durability. Living in Florida nearly my whole life, I know the toll our weather can take on a garage floor. That's why I had Matt and the crew from Spartan Coatings transform this space. And the best part, they did it in one day. It was a professional process from step one. The polyurea and polyaspartic system provide superior flexibility, is four times stronger than epoxy coatings, and will withstand temperatures high and low. Plus, it comes with a 20-year warranty. Whether it's a garage floor, patio, pool deck, driveway, or your interior flooring, Spartan Coatings has you covered. To get started transforming your ugly concrete surfaces, call 904-671-3930 or visit Spartan Coatings dot com today for your free quote in northeast florida we love hanging out on the back patio maybe grilling out lunch or dinner with the family enjoying the good weather or maybe enjoying the big game on the tv or maybe your favorite team in town the action sports jacks team this is great except for when it's really hot or the bugs start coming out but what if you didn't have to worry about that Titan Outdoor Solutions will make your outdoor area a comfortable spot any time of the day, any time of the year. This makes too much sense. Titan Outdoor Solutions can give your home an upgrade. Customized pergolas, awnings, controlled shade, even retractable screens. The solution to beating the heat and the bugs and getting more use out of your home is Titan Outdoor Solutions. And this can even help prevent storm damage at your home. Living in Florida and living in your home is already good. Now make it great. Quality products, custom work, locally owned and operated. Visit TitanShuttersAndScreens.com or call 904-484-7580. Hey everyone, Olivia Tassley here from Action Sports Jacks to tell you all the different ways you can watch our new 24-7 network. Three easy steps. You don't even need a pen and paper to write it down. Step number one, download the app. Search Action News Jacks in your app store either on your phone or your smart TV. Then, once you're on the app, click on that little drop-down menu in the upper left-hand corner with the three little lines. That'll show you these options, and boom, right here. Click Action Sports Jacks 24-7, and you will be brought to our continuous stream channel. That app can be accessed through all these different platforms, whether you have Roku, Fire TV, Smart TV, Apple TV or Google TV, you can find our app. Now, if you don't have access to the app, don't worry. We still got you covered. We're across all social media platforms from Facebook, Instagram, X, YouTube, Twitch. We have a podcast channel. Plus, check out our short reels on our TikTok. Action Sports Jacks 24-7. It's on all the time and everywhere. It's the place we party in football season with Jaguars All Access. Welcome to String Sports Brewery, everybody. Say hello to our guest tonight. That is Trevor Lawrence. You can bring your party or event to String Sports Brewery in Springfield any day and any time. Rehearsal dinners, corporate events, birthdays here at Strings. You can enjoy the inside area and the outside area. Good for any weather, good for any occasion. Watch the games, play the games, shoot some hoops, beer, yeah, they have that. Plenty of choices. And sure, this is a brewery, but Strings is also a restaurant, and the food is fantastic. A full menu made from scratch meals. And if you need String Sports Brewery to help with a party at your place, they cater too. Family, beer, food, sports, Spring Sports Brewery in Springfield. 
Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Hey, look at the Jacksonville Iceman fans from Sunday. They actually, uh, the Iceman lost this weekend a couple of games, including the uh, regular season finale 7-4. But here's the good news. We're in the postseason. The Kelly Club playoffs begin this week, Thursday at home. And uh, get ready to be loud and proud. And the Icemen are really good this year, playing a tough division. They finished second, two points out of first place. So uh, they will be home in this first series. Best of seven over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we will probably stop in with the Icemen practice and skate on Wednesday here on the Brenton Austin Show. So uh, more to come on the Jacksonville Iceman playoff hockey, man. It's fun. Mm-hmm. NBA playoffs start. NHL. ECHL. Getting close. Kind of a fun time of year. Very fun time of year. Um, Bucks faltering, and the Red Wings got to win two games to probably go to the playoffs. So it's, that's coming down in the NHL. I'm not sure if you've been following the NHL at all, but the playoff seedings are ridiculous. Getting right crazy. Now. It's super crazy. Yeah, which is weird because like, the NBA wasn't. Like the t- top 10, now that they do the play in, yeah. 7 to 10, wasn't crazy. But actually, the 6 to 7, now who got in the play in game versus the the top six who, who clear that mm-hmm. hurdle, like the Magic. The Magic got a big win over the Bucks, and obviously Giannis didn't play, but that was a big win Yeah, because now they don't have to worry about the play-in, and uh, they're back in the postseason. I think NBA's a little bit, well, it's a lot of bit interesting. I think it's pretty, outside of the Celtics, the rest of the league is wide open, it feels like. Yes, and so, I mean, with NBA, you're talking about NBA, I don't know, uh, yeah, I mean, Boston I mean, is up with through, the team. Two through eight in the East is going to be pretty wide open. And the whole West, look now listen, there's Denver. There's Denver, there's OKC. But is OKC, OKC doesn't, OKC doesn't I mean, feel like. They're the top seed for a reason, I get but it. they're pretty good. I get it. SGA's playing at a very high level right now. I just wouldn't be surprised to see some upsets. The Celtics are the one that you'd be like, wow, are they gonna, if they lose, th- that's they've just yeah, been really good. No, for sure. But, I mean, and I'm, this could be just. The optimism in me, but like you have Giannis coming back now, so hopefully the Bucks can do better. But with Doc Rivers, gives you no sense of security. And Bede's and then coming you have, back. And Bede's coming back for Philly. So yeah, I mean it's going to be wide open. I think on both sides, like I get Boston's the heavy favorite as they should be. They've been dominating all year, and they're the most complete team. But we've seen in these NBA playoffs, you know, all it needs is like one Jimmy Butler run, and all of a sudden the Heat are the talk of the town. You know, yeah. so like. Things can happen. I think it's going to be pretty entertaining. Uh, Glenn says uh, Rangers win the President's Cup. Most wins in franchise history. Really. Yeah. Is that the case? Ra- Rangers are dominating. franchise history. Wow. Rangers are dominating right now. And the way that it's looking for, at least in the East, there's like two games left for a lot of these teams. And you, theoretically, you have one, two, three. You have four teams competing for the last wild card spot mm. with two games left. So um, it's going to be chaotic. All right, uh, speaking of chaos, let's yes. get back to Shock Your Mock, presented by Everbank, week number two of Shock Your Mock. Delphonic already had his. Where are we going next? So now we're going to Duval Jags, and that's Woo! Duval Jags. We got ourselves Jags. a receiver. Yep, that's Duval Jags, and this guy probably sent in 25 different uh, mocks. This is the first one that he sent in. Wow. Okay, so this is what I'm going off of. Um, he used the profootballnetwork.com, whatever. This is, where, this is where the trade came from, in case we're wondering. Okay. Didn't really know who he traded with. Or no, I guess Adunze fell to 17. Brent, your thoughts <laughs> real quick before we get started. How did that happen? Did we have some breaking news on draft day that dropped Adunze? I'm going to need like, to see how this... That's the only way this dude's dropped to 17, did, right? Did Yeah, did he have a, a, an unfortunate video on draft day come out with like... I probably should have looked at this one a little more before we started it, huh? My bad. Well, that's fine. It okay. Bring, I mean, listen, if you're able to get him, it's I mean, if it worked, it worked there. there. I definitely want to see how the rest of this shook out. But, okay, let's break down a Dunes. I think it might be his first time on the show here. And I like to talk about him, Brent, because, well, he is a piece I think Trevor Lawrence could fall in love with. 6'3", 212, ran a 4'4", 39-inch vertical, and 10'4". I'm sorry, 39-inch vertical, yes, and then 10'4 on the broad jump. Um, we don't see a lot of tall stud receivers, Brent. We talked about this before on the show a little bit. He could be that guy. NFL comparison is Larry Fitzgerald. Take that for how you want. I mean, it, yeah, obviously you love that. But no, but here's the thing: like a Stephen Nelson comp with the first round no, pick, no, the I last hear you. one here. I hear you, but like, I guess what I think of Larry Fitzgerald, I never thought about a guy who was like going for jump balls all the time. Maybe he did, 
But I always thought of Larry Fitzgerald more as like a polished, could kind of do it all. Yeah, Not like but necessarily I think an explosive. Hand, what I yeah. think of strong hands, I think he's going to grab that 50 50 ball. Okay. He's also going to be, you're right, polished, crisp, everything yeah. else. Like, yeah, and reliable. I just think, like, when we watched Larry Fitzgerald play, do we use the word freak a lot when we watched him play? Maybe we did. I don't know. I'm. Yeah. It's recency bias, right? It's, it was a while ago. I, I think you're. I think you're. I think what's transpired since Fitzgerald was in his heyday has mm-hmm. has morphed a little bit okay. of our view. Yeah. Like you have the Jamar Chases and Justin Jefferson crazy seasons and AJ Brown, but got to remember, man, this guy best guy in the game, maybe. True. No, without over, a doubt, over like yeah. a decade. And I hear you. We go ask Jerry Sullivan about him who lives in town time. and coached him up. I mean, I think he's going to say, yeah. Well, listen, Stud. whether you consider Larry Fitzgerald a freak or not a player, Odunze is definitely a freak by all means. He relishes jump balls and man coverage, elite ball skills, carries the frame and plays strength, according to scouts, to be a legitimate NFL wide receiver one. Say no more. Yeah, I mean, listen, Odunze, I think, comes with the, the least amount of fanfare mm-hmm. because he was on the West Coast. But obviously, Washington making their run – Turn people on to him. I just saw someone else said, uh, I think it was Bruce Feldman said, Marvin Harrison Jr. He's like the easiest slam dunk receiver coming out of college that he's had yeah. in forever. I don't know if people view Odunze that way, but the fact that he's even in the conversation, I think showcases with neighbors what kind of players these guys can be. Now we have Enos Rakestraw Jr. coming in at pick number 48. Once again, you know, name pushes it to the limit a little bit. Brent, say that for you want. And it's Enos. Uh, Six, I'm sorry, 5'11", 182, ran a 4'5", cornerback out of Mizzou. Brent, your initial thoughts? Yeah, I mean, we go back to the 183 we don't love about it. I don't know if he's big enough. But can they put more? It's not as concerning as 172 or, you know, the Wiggins, but also a little on the shorter side. I mean, I just don't think he checks boxes for a guy like Balky who seems like a check-the-box guy. For sure, Brent, but he loves to shut him down, open up shop, because as scouts have said, he is a rough ride for receivers because of his ability to jam and press coverage, which seems to be a Ryan Nielsen MO. Rough ride. Rough I mean, guys get impressed. And He's you a think rough and you think that Ryan Nielsen wants a press coverage guy. Yeah. Yep. Um oh, and by the way, Brent, fun fact, I did a little more research on this, and this is my thing, not really necessarily a scout's take, but he attracts baby deer and other wildlife critters because he plays so salty. <laughs> Guy plays with an attitude, and I'm not sure if he grew up with a lot of nature in Rhode Island, but deer, critters alike, love salt blocks. They like salt. Salt. Well, you I thought deer bet- like, like the flowers. Do you do like a lot of things, man? Like, oh. yeah, you, you watch Bambi one time, you think it's like a documentary? Yeah, I'm sure they eat flowers too, but I'm just saying if you want to like go deer hunting, you put a salt block out and they love the salt in the wintertime. How about that? Dude? Yeah, I know. So there you go. See, we're learning something here on this show oh, as yeah. well. They're one thing about, about him, by the way, 32 inch arms, pretty long Yeah, for a uh, corner. Yeah, that could be a Trent Balky Blue Light special. Um, next pick. Pick 96, going to Kansas. Once again, I thought they got the head of football team. Uh, Dominique Pooney. Guard six foot five, three thirteen, ran a five three five, uh, j- broad jumped eight eleven. He's anything but puny. Yeah, big boy. Your thoughts, Brent? Um, don't hate it. I see what they're doing. I mean, late third round uh, to go get your future guard potentially take yeah. over for Sheriff. Like this is. I, I don't think I would hate a pick like this. I can see where it adds up. I think this is it for Sheriff. Uh, you can use more depth. I think there's a lot of hope in a guy like Cooper Hodges, who's from Baker County, at playing that spot. But you still really don't know. So um, I'm okay with this pick. Yeah, I mean, so this guy's NFL comparison was Dan Freeney. You heard of Dan Freeney. I still have yet to hear of Dan Freeney. <laughs> um, this guy, though, Brandon, once again, I've echoed this on this show, like big dude has the nimblest feet you're ever going to see. Like, to the point where I'm wondering if there's some kind of YouTube video of him, like, doing the dance of the Sugar Plum Fairies, maybe, in uh, Swan Lake or something. Not calling him a Sugar Plum Fairy, with all the respect, sir. I'm just saying the dance of the Sugar Plum Fairies is a very legit dance with nimble feet. And I feel like Dominic Pooney, what people are saying about him, would fit right into that uh, dance, Brent. Maybe. But I like a guy named Big Dom on my team. Big Dom. (laughs) So do the Eagles. (laughs) 
Yeah, I like that. All right, Mason McCormick, South Dakota, pick 116, not related to the McCormick salt group that, you know, you, the seasonings and everything. Uh, yeah, no good. relation. I checked it. A lot it. of salt here. Uh, I checked it. Yep. Oh, I'm, I'm getting hungry. Um, 6'4", 309, 33 and 7'8 inch arms. That's going to be a Trent Bulky Blue White special. Brent, your thought? Oh, by the way, number one athletic ranking on the next-gen stats. You Fun say 36-inch arms? 33 and 7 eighths. Oh, <laughs> I was like, holy cow. Sorry, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, 33 uh, and 7 eighths. Yeah, this one's interesting to me. This says, are you grooming your next center in the fourth round? You could find it. Like, you could find some value there. Mm-hmm. But are we, like, how many centers do you need? You've got position versatility usually with guards. Yeah. And then on top of that, I mean, they're not cutting Fortner. Like, I think they're going to hope he develops a little bit more under Mitch Morris, gets a little bit of a break yeah. and resets his career. So I don't know if we're into the center world yet. This feels like a pick next year in the draft more than this year. I mean, Trent Baalke loves those guys in the trenches, Brent. He's got the long arms to prove but, it. But we're, Trent like, we got get some an edge here. You could get. Uh, yeah. I mean, you could do a lot more things. I think that can impact your football team. Yes. At one sixteen, like this guy is not impacting your football team. He's not. No, this is true. And once again, you're still missing that edge, right? So I, I agree with you here, Brent. You're, you're addressing some needs. Wide receiver. You can make an argument for corner. Not seeing an edge rusher, though. We take a project, it seems like, with Mason McCormick. Yeah, I get where you're coming from here. A little about him real quick. Um, obviously a big-bodied guy. Has a tight upper and lower half. Just say he plays tight. You don't got to say tight upper and lower half, scouts. Um, and plays with clean eyes. Clean eyes. <laughs> we went from hungry eyes when, when to clean eyes. Plays with, scouts are saying that he plays with clean eyes. What does that mean? Just everything is clear to him? He's got 2020 he's a, vision, he's 2013 a, he, vision. He's a visionary. Whatever, man. All right. Next pick. Now, Brent, we're going back-to-back Masons here. A little free Mason, a little Illuminati coming at you if you're buying that type of thing. Free jar giveaway. And, and, and real Jaguar's quick. second game of the year. And real quick, speaking of, nice, speaking of conspiracy theories, what did I run the, the, the 40-yard dash? Do you remember? I mean, if uh, you're just a guess. I think you were um, like a 5-1 guy. Would you just be honest, please, with yourself? I did not run a five one at the combine. What four eight five? Thank you, four eight four. Right? We established yeah. this. We looked it up. <laughs> Do you believe in conspiracy theories and like some other forces at play here? Because if you type in my name, I did it. If you type my name on the NFL Combine website now, they say I ran a four nine one. They updated my combine stuff, and some of the things that the cool things that they said about me are not there anymore. Really? So I'm really starting to wonder. If Shaq Mock is getting to the, the, the big wigs, and they're taking note, Brent. Really? Now they're coming after you. Me. Looked at this. I checked it out. <laughs> and they, I did the research. They've got some. They they changed a lot. What was said about me, and they changed my number. I they swear. Went back? I swear. Look at it. Four nine one. I don't have four nine anything and ever. They, they took other descriptions out there. Yes. Wow. What do you think about that? They're trying to make themselves look bad. What do you think about that? You think they're getting upset because I'm making fun of scouts all the time? Absolutely. All right. So maybe your mock is in your head. So maybe there's some higher power scouts. Maybe there's some higher power. I'm not even getting either. Like, look it up. Soft and salty scouts. I don't know what's happening. All right. Getting back, though, now that I got in my soapbox a little bit, Mason Smith with two A's, Brent, by the way. I like that. He has an Aaron Rodgers effect. Mason. Yeah, you happy with that? Not really. You happy with that? I don't know why it sounded out? like a sheep. <laughs> well, that's what I pictured. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's going to be his, if we draft him, now, that'll if be. From, if that Mason was from South Dakota State, it would have made more Mason. sense. Mason. Yeah, this guy's from LSU, man. I mean, I got, they probably have sheep in LSU or whatever. Okay. Shouldn't Mason's, sound like a tiger. Mason Smith. Uh, and by the way, not a punter from Averett College, who you could make a mistake on because there's a punter, Averett Smith, by the way. Not going to the draft himself. Didn't, didn't do that well. Uh, and where's Averett College, right? But um, this Mason. Um, is 6'5", 306, get ready for this one, Brent, 35-inch arms. Oof. That's long. That's that is a, long. That's a Trent bulky blue light special. Ran a five flat, 31-inch vertical, and a nine on the broad. Wow, athletic dude. So th- here's the thing about this guy. Was a top 20 national high school prospect. Missed 2021 with uh, a shoulder injury and 2022 with an ACL tear. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Um, Trent Bulky special. Trent Bulky boy special. <laughs> um, people say that he's better suited for a 3-4 defensive end, but getting this guy is based purely on potential hmm. because while he has the credentials coming into college, while he still, despite the injuries, still has athletic numbers, production 
has never been there. Yeah, obviously, you've got an injury history, which you don't like, right? Yeah. Uh, but also at 126, is this the spot where you can take a little bit of a gamble on a guy? Yeah, I mean, this is, is a spot where you can take a guy like Taven Bryan or Caleb on Chase on and try to develop him, right? <laughs> Right. Also, good players coming out of high school. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, We've had Muhammad Kamara before. We've had Muhammad Kamara before. So th- this is the, the Larry Hart. This is the That's alternative the Larry Hart. Right. This guy ran a four, five, seven, a little faster than Larry. Uh, Thirty-four and a half inch vertical. Jumps a little higher than Larry. Uh, six one two forty eight. Same size as Larry Hart. Um, scouts say that he's not going to be every one's cup of tea due to his length and his size. Trent Baalke likes the long guys. It's the exact opposite of that. But once again, maybe Trent Baalke decides, you know what? Let me switch it up a little bit. Right? Kind of like Seinfeld when George did the exact opposite for a while. It paid off. Maybe Trent Baalke does the exact opposite and takes Muhammad Camaro. Real quick, though, production, you can't deny whether it's from Colorado State or Murray State. Uh, 30 and a half sacks and... 40-something tackles for This is what we like about this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Production. Yeah, production's pretty good. Production's good. Have we had DeAndre Prince before? We have not had DeAndre Prince before, Brent. So this guy is coming out of Ole Miss. Um, Starter for a better part of his career at Ole Miss. Prince plays an upright posture, lacks desired hip fluidity in his transitions. Could be a more effective press corner, but needs to play with better physicality. Here's the thing with Prince, though. And I guess, like, Maybe I'm to the point now, Brent, where a four three eight isn't that fast anymore because he's dropping to one fifty four. Guy ran a four three eight. Mm. That's blazing. Yeah. Thirty four and a half inch vertical, ten five on the broad jump, six feet tall, one hundred eighty three pounds, thirty and three fourths inch arms, and eight and a half inch hands. Wow, it seems like all these guys are light a little bit. On it does, front, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. Maybe that's why they're so fast. Yeah. Is that going to be a new trend? Yeah. But I just always have felt like 195 to 205 is where I kind of want my corners to be. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't add weight to them. Uh, the other thing is this guy, obviously there's a trade here because now the Jags have all these picks in the top 154 still ended up with seven of them. So Correct. Um, yeah, interesting. Like, here's the thing about this one. Roma Dunze is not going to be there. This one's hard to kind of like now, convince me it's reality. I mean, if you trade with Chicago, could he be there? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, say you trade with Chicago. At number nine. Yeah, number yeah, nine. Or Atlanta. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Atlanta. You'd have to do something like yeah. that to, to make it happen. But, no, I agree with you here. So I'll let you, uh, I'll let you vote first. Well, let's I'll do this. Let's take a break. We're going to take one more break. We'll come back. We'll reveal the winner. And a uh, quick thought or two maybe on Scotty Scheffler winning the Masters and uh, put a bow on the show. That is Shock Your Mock Week 2 underway presented by Everbank. Brent and Austin show. We'll do it each and every day here this week. And don't forget to join us from Best Bet St. Augustine on Friday. Come hang out with us, have some lunch, play some games, listen to the show, talk some sports. Friday from Best Bet St. Augustine. In Northeast Florida, we love hanging out on the back patio, maybe grilling out lunch or dinner with the family, enjoying the good weather, or maybe enjoying the big game on the TV. Or maybe your favorite team in town, the Action Sports Jacks team. This is great, except for when it's really hot or the bugs start coming out. But what if you didn't have to worry about that? Titan Outdoor Solutions will make your outdoor area a comfortable spot, any time of the day, any time of the year. This makes too much sense. Titan Outdoor Solutions can give your home an upgrade. Customized pergolas, awnings, controlled shade, even retractable screens. The solution to beating the heat and the bugs and getting more use out of your home is Titan Outdoor Solutions. And this can even help prevent storm damage at your home. Living in Florida and living in your home is already good. Now make it great. Quality products, custom work, locally owned and operated. Visit TitanShuttersAndScreens.com or call 904-484-7580. Navigating to that perfect car can be a daunting task. Trust me, I understand, but if you want to find the perfect blend of sales and service for your automotive needs, look no further than the Tom Bush family of dealerships. Here at Tom Bush, they do things right. Dating back to 1970, they've been a staple in the community giving back and keeping everything local. With four different brands to choose from, BMW, Mazda, Volkswagen, and Mini, there's a car for every member of the family, and the customer service is second to none. 
looking to add an electric vehicle to your fleet, Tom Bush remains at the forefront of new technology with plenty of staff on hand to walk you through the future of driving and help eligible customers file for that EV tax credit. Whether you're looking for your future driver's first car or you want to step up to luxury and arrive in style, the Tom Bush Family Dealership is the only stop that you need to make. Stop by the showroom or check out the inventory at TomBush.com. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. It might look quiet, but that's just a chance to admire the facilities on the campus of the University of North Florida Ospreys. The stretch run has arrived in college sports, and for the Ospreys, that means the end of the beach volleyball season coming soon. And critical series for UNF softball and on the baseball diamond for the Ospreys team. Tennis is trying to peak in time for April's Ace Sun tourney as well. The postseason in golf is on the horizon, and track and field has its busiest stretch of the season. For news, schedules, and results, just go to UNFOspreys.com. Do you have ugly concrete around your home or business? Are you tired of concrete that is cracked, stained, or just plain ugly? Spartan Coatings range of products provides a surface that is non-porous, easy to clean, antibacterial, and slip resistant, all with superior durability. Living in Florida nearly my whole life, I know the toll our weather can take on a garage floor. That's why I had Matt and the crew from Spartan Coatings transform this space. And the best part, they did it in one day. It was a professional process from step one. The polyurea and polyaspartic system provide superior flexibility, is four times stronger than epoxy coatings, and will withstand temperatures high and low. Plus, it comes with a 20-year warranty. Whether it's a garage floor, patio, pool deck, driveway, or your interior flooring, Spartan Coatings has you covered. To get started transforming your ugly concrete surfaces, call 904-671-3930 or visit Spartan Coatings Dot com today for your free quote. Everyone loves a good game night. Here you don't have to be the host. You don't have to clean up. They bring the food and drinks to you. And you can watch whatever you want on the big screens. It's more than a card room. It's a night full of fun with friends. Best Bet Jacksonville, Orange Park. And now the newest location here in St. Augustine, right off 95 at exit 311. A brand new clean room. A full bar and menu. My favorite sushi in town. And I love the fries too. You don't have to just play poker at Best Bet. That's why I come over here to the table games and play one card poker. That's a pretty good card and a win. One card poker is like war as a kid. You against the dealer. And this isn't the only fun table game to play. A friendly staff, a lot of fun, it's a good night out at Best Bet Jacksonville Orange Park in the newest location in St. Augustine. You can be a serious player or a novice, it doesn't matter. If winning equals fun, you're a winner every time at Best Bet. I'll save you a seat and I'll see you down here at Best Bet St. Augustine. Welcome back to the Brett and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. This is the big news of the morning. The Jaguars revealing the throwbacks. Gets everybody excited, fired up. Man, you guys love uniforms. Mm, come on. Here it is. It's not the uniform. Let's, yeah, it's not the uniform. Let me really mess that piece up, yes. This was the reveal that they will be having throwback uniforms. Yeah, I mean, I love it, man. Maybe just a little limp biscuit though to, to really amplify it a little more, but overall ten out of ten. <laughs> overall pretty good, huh? Yeah. yeah and uh, yeah. that's got the attention of the chat and everyone in Jacksonville. We continued to uh talk about the Jags and the draft and the lead up. A lot of receiver talk today, by the way. If you missed any of the show, it replays on the Action Sports Jacks twenty four seven network. That's on Action News Jacks app and actionnewsjacks.com. Of course you can always find it on all the social media platforms as well. Shock Your Mock, presented by Everbank, in the books for this Monday. That's five of them we've done now, so five advancing. Who is advancing? I asked you first, man. Who are you taking? You know, here's the deal. 
Delphonic is a fan favorite, so it's probably a little bit of bias in the in in the chat for him. Okay, um, but I'm trying to get Delphonic out of there. Okay, as much. Yeah, I have this love hate with Delphonic. Yep, including me as a puppet with Balky. Yes, but the problem is, if I'm being real, I can't. Like the other one wasn't real mm. because Odunze is not going to be picked number seventeen. So I hate the fact that Delphonic picked the corner at number seventeen. But I think it's more realistic. Well, and he also got a wide receiver in the second round with Leggett. Yeah, and I do like Leggett, by the way. I yeah. think that would be a nice get. Nice. So you're two taking Delphonic. I'm taking Delphonic. Yeah, I think I'm taking Delphonic as well. I mean, theoretically, if a Dunze was going to drop to 17, like, okay, then that, that probably wouldn't shock your mock. But it's not going to happen. All right? Like, it's just not feasible. Not Duval Jag's fault. Maybe it's more of the system that he was using. But we can't co-sign a Dunze just dropping to 17 and not us like trading up to get him. So I'm taking Delphonic too because while you may not like a corner at 17, it's the realistic one of the two. Absolutely. Uh, all right, we got like a minute to go. Uh, Let's talk about golf quick or not? No, yeah, I mean, Masters, I huh? give an update uh, from Scotty. UNF, by the way. Men's tennis, undefeated conference season in the A-Sun. Baseball uh, beats Lipscomb in the series finale. Women's tennis ends the regular season with a win over Queens. Women's golf uh, in the A-Sun championship. Softball uh, did come up short, but uh, won 1-1 on senior night for the softballers at UNF. Go to unfospreys.com for everything. Ospreys as the spring sports season starts to wrap up. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, dominant, kind of boring. I mean, he really kind of <laughs> made it boring. Uh, I think the big question now about Scheffler, seriously, is he so good and is he on such a run that we start talking about him in the Grand Slam? Mm. Because he's going to be the favorite going to the PGA Championship. He's won the players and now the Masters and wouldn't be surprised if he wins the PGA Championship. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about a heck of a dominant run in uh, the sport of golf, and he's kind of making it look easy. He did not have his A game, and he still won by four shots. So that's uh, there's your sum up. Dang, man. The Masters. I mean, we, we spent like three hours talking about that lead up, and now we're like, ah, Scotty Shepard. Yeah, we might talk a little bit more tomorrow. We'll get some Iceman chatter on here right. as well tomorrow. Obviously, more football and more shock your mock, and uh, that's going to do it. For a Monday, hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Everybody, we'll see you on the TV side, CBS 47, Fox 30. Trevor Lawrence, Foye Lewican. Talk to the media tomorrow afternoon, so we'll be at Jags headquarters for that.